Good evening, one and all, and welcome to happy hour number 44. Um, it seems like an appropriate time to do a movie like this. The new Matrix movie is going to be out in, what, a week or two? Um, I don't have particularly high hopes for it, um, but I thought it would be a nice opportunity to remember when the Matrix movies were we're actually still good, and so I thought we'll do a happy hour tonight, um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the first Matrix movie where it all began, um, and who better to do it with than the one and only Danquish. Hello, sir. Cheers. Thank you very much for having me back. No problem at all, mate. No, it's been a while since you've been on. Um, I... You know, for people who don't know, Zanquish is the inventor of the drunk saber, which will spout out drinker lines whenever you swing it. Um, and you are, you're, you're actually a pretty good um, cosplayer as well in your spare time. You've got an Instagram, no, not Instagram, sorry. Oh, it is Instagram, isn't it? It is Instagram, Instagram yes, correct. Yeah, um, so you've done all, I've seen some of your stuff where you're dressed up as like Sub-Zero and stuff from Mortal Kombat. It's awesome, man. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Cool, yeah, man. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's good to have you back tonight. So, um, yeah, you, you've led you've led an action packed lifestyle in your time as well. Like uh, I remember hearing from you that um, you, you'd been hospitalized with with broken ribs because you you did a bit of downhill mountain biking and it all went tits yeah. up, and you ended up in the hospital with that. Yeah, that uh, and then you were back impressive. recently with pneumonia. So, damn man, you've you've been through the the ringer recently. I have. It's. Uh... It's quite a humbling experience when you come face to face with your own mortality, uh, especially twice in less than two years. Yeah, uh, damn, man. But I can just say I'm very grateful and I have the highest respect for all the caregivers that literally had my life in their hands. And I'll tell you, the food was, was actually really good. It wasn't a, a takeaway kebab, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it definitely brought life back to me. Well, if there's no takeaway kebabs, I'm not interested, man. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. No, that was uh, well. I, I've discovered that, that microwave kebabs are are not they're they're not really this thing I'd want to tuck into of an evening. You know, um, they remind me of that bachelor chow stuff from from Futurama. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the stuff in the bag. generic <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I would actually eat that if they had that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I, I would eat it over. Over this thing, because I assume at least that tastes of something, you know. I don't know. Mm. I want it to yeah. taste like like stale cereal or something like that. That would be funny. Possibly, yeah. It, it, it wasn't the best stuff, but hey, it made for a fun video, you know. It, um, it and sure I actually did. got to eat the the real takeaway kebab after that that film unwrapped, so I was happy. Right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, Obviously, we we're going to talk a little bit about the Matrix tonight. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I'm old enough to have seen it when it was actually out at the cinema. Like, For I sure. went along knowing absolutely fuck all about it. Um, mm -hmm. I hadn't really seen any trailers or anything. It was just a friend of mine who said, "Like, this film's meant to be awesome. Let's go see it." Mm -hmm. um, and I did, and just blown away by it. It was it was unlike any action movie I think I'd seen up until that point. Absolutely. You know, Yep. Um, the, the way it blends like sci-fi and gunplay action and big explosions mm -hmm. um, with, with like the awesome like kung fu uh, fight in style that they've got that's like mm -hmm. wire work and everything um, combined with you know the, the crazy special effects it was just like an absolute tour de force kind of movie um, and sure. just blew me away yeah I remember um, you know when it was released I went with a bunch of colleagues uh, and again, all I'd seen is I hadn't even seen the trailers either. I just saw a little blurb on it on some internet movie site and we sat down and we just did not know what to make of it for like the first 15, 20 minutes. Like what, what is going on? What is this? Mm. Uh, and then when, you, once you become immersed in it, we walked away completely stunned, promptly bought tickets. So we could see it again. Mm. Uh, just amazing. The, the, the concepts, the, you know the like you said the the wire work and uh, you know just kind of the alternate reality type of thing mm -hmm. uh, remarkably prescient for our present day uh, well yeah you see that weird creepy shit from uh, from facebook where it's like oh, you know, online virtual world run by fucking mark zuckerberg like no nah, uh, no thanks mate <laughs> i'd rather be in the actual matrix than that exactly draw your own conclusions uh, yeah, <laughs> this is all a simulation. None yeah, of it's I'm real. Not, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to say, but uh, you know, 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's um, you know, it, it felt like a lot of things that just all came together at the right time. You know, mm, with the Matrix, sure. uh, it was obviously coinciding with the rise of the internet, which was just exploding in the late '90s, like really That's starting true. to take off. Um, you know, the concept of like virtual reality, um, it wasn't brand new, like plenty of other things had done it, but the idea of, you know, you couldn't even distinguish it from, from reality, mm -hmm. I, I think was kind of an interesting new idea. I hadn't seen much of that up until that point. Right. Um, and then they obviously combined that with this kind of reality defying um you know you can bend the rules of gravity type thing where mm -hmm. guys can leap like 30 feet in the air you can do all these incredible kung fu moves mm -hmm. um they did the the um i think they pioneered that whole idea of the um surround camera Absolutely. thing where they freeze frame it and then rotate around it and it was like yeah. incredible the way it was done like mounting yeah. dozens of cameras on a frame all around the actor Mm -hmm. um, I just remember that very first scene with Trinity when they go into a her and she just leaps up in the air yep. and then you get that great iconic camera shot as it pans exactly. all the way around her mid kick like that's just beautiful but just freeze framed it while she's doing like you know this cool dramatic pose and yep. you, your eyes just you know bug out like what okay I've never seen anything like that I'm in this is this is awesome yep uh, yeah very much um and i was gonna say like it it didn't quite pioneer bullet time because i always hold up blade okay. as being the first movie that did bullet time um it, it's really okay. shit cgi it doesn't look anywhere near as good as as the matrix does but there's a bit where blade tries to shoot deacon frost when he's got like a hostage in front of him um and you get this little shot of the bullet coming from blade's gun really and deacon, okay yeah he just ducks to the sides just to avoid it um like okay. i say it's it's blade you know and the the, the cgi in blade is not great it hasn't mm -hmm. aged well um <laughs> but you do you do get to see that bullet just whiz by his head in slow motion so okay that was I'll the first movie i can again. think of okay. yeah um but no I, I think it's great like the whole introduction you get the agents straight away mm -hmm. you know smith and the others um and you know you you keep raising the stakes with that initial bit you know the cops right. go in thinking they can handle trinity she destroys them easily mm -hmm. because she's so good at fighting but then the agents show up and she's shit scared of them so she has to flee from them exactly. and so you keep yeah. raising the stakes of who's more dangerous than the others and you you know straight away these agents are something to be feared you know right um i love that moment where she you know, she goes over the rooftop, she leaps through a window and tumbles down these stairs and she's just yep. at the bottom with the guns pointed yeah, up. Exactly. Yep. And, and she's yep. having to say to herself, get up, Trinity. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> it's so tense, yeah. Uh, um, the one thing I wanted to, to comment on, like I've watched the movie uh, several times in the past, but then I rewatched it last night. There's that one scene when, um, when the agents show up and the cops are like, yeah, we got this, we got this. I always thought that the the chief or the sergeant on staff always flubbed his line because he says if you give me any of that juris my diction crap you can mm. cram it up your ass juris my diction like listen to it like it's that's what he says and i, thought, I mean I, I i get the line i get the yeah. kind of gag that they were going for there it's a bit okay. clunky um okay. and the i don't know the the whole way that that police chief guy like the lines he's given and the way he mm. delivers them, it's very like old school, you know, like something out of a, a 70s cop show or something. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we got it under control. She's mm. bringing, the, um, my boys are bringing her in. You know, mm. it, it's very, very goofy and old fashioned and stuff. And it, yeah. I don't know if it was meant, if it was a conscious choice, because again, the agents kind of look like that. They look like mm. your stereotypical G men from the 60s with their. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're kind of awkward suits and their sunglasses and like they all kind of dress and like their hair styled the same and everything. And just deadpan serious. Yeah. Um, you know, and they even rock up in like an old fashioned like Ford. I, I don't know mm -hmm. what exactly kind of model it is, but like it just it, again, it looks like the kind of car that's older than its time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, all of that stuff, like I, I think all of that was very much intentional, like the, their whole look, the way they act and stuff, it was meant to represent just kind of government authority. Right. Um, you know, and they're they're all kind of very homogenous. They're all they're all white. They've all got like really kind of common Anglo Saxon names. Like I think it's like Smith, 
Jones and and Brown. I think that's their names. Just like the kind of name you would find anywhere. Definitely lacking in diversity, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where's the black transgender, like disabled agent? That's what I want to know. Well, just wait for this new one to come out. I'm sure it'll check all those boxes. Well, th this is the thing, um, and I guess you know, this is something you even got back then in that the agents are the sort of thing that you can see as the the oppressor the authority mm -hmm. figures and so sure. um it would make sense particularly in today's culture that they would be white males mm -hmm. you know okay um the, the, you know the, yeah. the the people that are bravely struggling against them i would bet will be very diverse but the mm -hmm. agents themselves will will always be white men i okay. should think okay um, that's a that's a fair observation yeah um but yeah i do i do like that whole um that whole opening section gives you just a great feel for the kind of world that you're part of um mm -hmm. you obviously get to see trinity doing things that a normal human can't do so you kind of exactly. get a sense straight away that something's something's up well the first um, time she like you know she kicks the one cop and then she runs up the wall like does a yeah. wall run and you're like okay what this is weird how did she do that yeah um so yeah, you, you kind of know that this is not a normal place, or she does. She's not a normal person with normal mm -hmm. abilities, and kind of neither are the agents. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't quite know what's up. And then when you get introduced to Neo, mm -hmm. again things just kind of go back to normal. Essentially, like he's just a he's a computer hacker, mm -hmm. and you don't quite know what his deal is. Um, but yeah, like he he finds out pretty quickly that. Um, something is not quite right about the world around him uh, right. you know he gets those messages on his computer telling him to follow the white rabbit and all that mm -hmm. um and so that's when he goes to the the club um and meets trinity mm -hmm. um and damn i'm just gonna say like carrie ann moss like not not an amazing actress <laughs> like I, I wouldn't describe her as someone with a huge amount of range but mm -hmm. um she's gorgeous in this mm -hmm. like she's really hot um, I, I think she she fills out that leather crop top very nicely. I'll tell you, hands up, you know, I'll give cheers to the costume department for this one. They uh, they really pulled out some yeah nice looking outfits. I do like uh, I do like when Neo goes to that club, and honestly, mm -hmm. it's like an S and M club. <laughs> like there's Scary there's guys funny. dancing in the background with just yeah. like the leather chaps and everything. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. No wonder he looks uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I would be a bit hesitant about going yeah. to a club like that. It's like, no, nah, I'm just here to have a few drinks, man. <laughs> Definitely not going to find Tatiana there. That's for sure. No, indeed not. Um, but yeah, I think that's. I, I've said this before. This was a real hallmark of like late '90s movies. There was a lot of techno music. There was a lot of leather. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a lot of sunglasses involved. True. You know, True. it was like that was a very like late nineties kind of cool. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> they actually look like the Smith sunglasses. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Damn, I don't even have mine here. Shit, yeah, I'm have to, yeah. I'd have to go away and get them. Yeah, you need your pilot glasses for sure. Yeah, yeah, the aviators. All right, I'll tell you what, give me, give me one second. I'll see if I can find them. Hold All on. right then. All right, so I'm going to put this question into chat. Right, do I go? Do I go for the Agent Smith glasses, as so? Nice. All right, or do I go for the aviators? All right, so I'm going to I'm going to put this to chat. Smith or aviators? Let me hear. Let me hear your thoughts, chats. Aviator, let's see, Smith, Smith, all right, I think Smith's got it, yeah, the Smith has it, all right, cool, they're going on, 
There we are. It's nice for a change, you know. Looks good. There we go. <laughs> Anyone who tunes in from this point, like without any context, is going to be like, "What the fuck is happening here?" <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. Just anyway. tell people that you were helping your neighbor with her garbage. Yeah. I gotta give props to Hugo, Hugo Weaving in this movie. That was a, an inspired bit of casting. Like his yeah. delivery is just fantastic. Fantastic, beginning to end, um, and it's so. It's, he's also uh, Elrond, you know, which is he is. You, know, you just gotta think of wow. It's hard to see him in those two different roles, but and he was also the Red Skull. You know, that's true, Hugo yes, Weaving. Yeah. For a good ten years, he was just everywhere. If he needed mm -hmm. a villain, he could do it. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, if you you needed some kind of like enigmatic hero as well, like he could do that too. Mm -hmm. Fantastic actor. His performance in V for Vendetta, I just I really loved. Like his voice was mm -hmm. just perfect. Um, and you know, he was able to convey all that, so much emotion just through his movements, his mannerisms, and stuff. Obviously, he's wearing a mask throughout the whole movie. Right. Um, but yeah, in the just, Matrix, just, he he just he's very menacing without having to be, you know, overtly or just in your face. You know, there's a, yeah. there's a threatening uh, composure about him. I, I love uh, when he first meets Neo and, you mm -hmm. know, he's, he's in the cell and, and Smith just comes in and sits down. He really takes his time to, like, open mm -hmm. up this big folder and he's, like, looking through it. There's no need for him to do that, but he mm -hmm. just does it to, like, try and intimidate Neo. Exactly, and, which you works. Know, you get, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you get that line, like, as you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time, oh, Mr. Anderson. Just slow, deliberate, you know, yeah. where is this going? Yeah. <laughs> I've got to give props to Neo as well for, like, just mm -hmm. totally standing up to him. Because, like, oh, yeah. what, they, what, ne what Smith really wants is to get his hands on Morpheus. Mm -hmm. um, and... Neo's like not interested. So he offers him a deal basically, and, and Neo's like, Well, I got a better deal for you. How about I give you the finger? You give me my phone call. That was so satisfying. I remember we were just cracking up when we saw that. Like, how many times have you ever wanted to do that in your life? Yeah. Um, and he, he just does it, no fucking hesitation. But then he does that weird thing where his mouth just like <laughs> seals up. Um, exactly. Which, which, it's weird because it never happens after that, like, ever in the movies. And it always right. made me wonder, like, what the fuck did they do to make that happen to him? It's really weird. Um, but it's, well, it's a great yeah. visual moment. Well, it's like as you go further in the movie, uh, and Morpheus explains to Neo that they are sentient programs, uh, entities within the Matrix. So you would have to think that they would have some form of uh, control, like, to change things. Uh, like in the building when you know he he has the deja vu moment, and it's like that's what happens when they change things. Well, who's they? Like maybe the agents. Do the agents yeah. have that kind of power? Well, actually, someone in chat has has made a really good point, which I'd forgotten about. So at that okay. point, Neo was still plugged into the network. Mm -hmm. So if if it's any person who is still hardwired into the Matrix, mm -hmm. as opposed to like. What the resistance do when they just kind of hack their way in mm -hmm. then agents can manipulate them however they want like in theory okay. smith could have just taken over neo's body right there and then if he'd wanted to that's true yeah so um yeah that, okay. that totally explains that and that's actually yeah. a really good bit of um i guess world building it establishes mm -hmm. that rule so the, the agents can take over any person who's still hardwired into the matrix but they can't mm -hmm. take over um, people that have been freed from it okay. and are just hacking their way in. Okay, that's so, an excellent point. Yeah, that makes that makes sense actually. Um, so, what was I going to say? Yeah, so they put the bug in him, like so they can track him. Um, oh, again, that, just a weird scene where it just goes right in through his uh, his navel. You know? That that still creeps me out to this day. Like it's, it's a little bit of body horror, mm. and it it also. Uh, kind of pricks that side of you like if you don't like bugs or spiders or stuff like that it gives you a little bit of a phobic reaction i think yeah because it's not it's not gory like it's not there's not a lot of blood or anything it's just this weird idea of this like alien thing burrowing into you and it's mm -hmm. like stuck inside your body mm -hmm. um and yeah it's um i was gonna say as well you know before neo gets captured like morpheus tries to warn him that the agents are coming for him and mm -hmm. so they like he, he sends him a phone by fedex 
And I kid you not, man, everybody wanted that fucking Nokia phone oh, back in the day. The one yeah. with the, the like the, flip, the yeah. handset that just opens up. Like it's yeah. so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I needed to know what it was. So Yeah. <laughs> that that and um Morpheus is a trench coat. I wanted that so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um the it's it's funny. I got I get such a sense of nostalgia when I see like the the old fashioned technology. Like when mm-hmm. Neo's in his apartment and like he's yeah. got all his computers running, like because he's doing hacking mm-hmm. programs and stuff. And it's the big old CRT monitors exactly. and like floppy disk drives and everything. And I'm just like, oh god, I miss those wow. days. Exactly. <laughs> you know. You know, at, even at the beginning, you know, when uh, when Cipher calls, uh, Cipher and Trinity are communicating, and you just hear like what sounds like a dial-up. Yeah, uh, modem. Like phone, yeah, and like whoa, there's a sound we haven't heard in a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, but yeah, like so, they they end up. Um, I guess when the Resistance make contact with Neo again, mm-hmm. um, it'll he, he's able to meet. Morpheus and Lawrence Fishburne again, great bit of casting in this. Like Absolutely. he's cool as fuck. Um, His dramatic you know, pauses and you know just the way he would lean in, uh, it was just so well done. Yeah, like, very, like you didn't get. He was different than Hugo Weaving in the fact that he didn't. He wasn't uh, like scary or imposing or threatening or anything like that. But he was confident and uh, just very smooth. If, yes. for lack of a better term. It, it's almost like, and I guess this makes sense, like when you realize that the world of the Matrix isn't real, you almost wouldn't spare the effort to show emotion mm-hmm. or, or get invested in things because there's no need to, like none of it's real. Mm-hmm. And so you would just convey like the barest of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of what Morpheus does. But, you know, the the movie really takes its time to build up what's going on and mm-hmm. um, what Morpheus needs to tell him. Because when you finally find out what's what the matrix is mm-hmm. um it, it's not the sort of thing that a person could just blurt out you know like mm-hmm. morpheus couldn't just say to him like oh so all, none of this is real it's just a big computer simulation and you're actually just a human battery to provide power for a race of machines that have taken over the planet exactly you know a normal person would be like what the fuck no stop yeah. that doesn't make sense <laughs> so he really builds it up but he gives them the 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 option you know, he said he presents him with the two pills, and mm-hmm. you know, this has become the the stuff of internet lore. Mm-hmm. You, you can either take the blue pill and just pretend, you know, that none of this has happened, and like just live in your fantasy world, or you can take the red pill and see what things are really like. And again, uh, watching that the whole premise of this uh, twenty two years later, it's like. Uh, you know, this this kind of makes me feel a little in, uncomfortable in regards to how remarkably prescient it was in terms of socio political cultural uh, situations. Yes, uh, it's just like it's just loaded wall to wall with metaphor, and uh, yeah, you just wow. At the time, you're completely dazzled by this story and like, hmm, this makes me think. You know, fast forward to 2021. And you're like, nah, some of this doesn't seem too far fetched now, if you think about it. See, as as a simple minded child as I was at the time, <laughs> um, I, I took all of this as just like a metaphor for like okay. breaking free of control, like societal mm-hmm. expectations or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, this was all about like being your own person and not sure. uh, not accepting the constraints and the expectations that are put on you by the world. Sure. Um, now I re- realize that the whole thing is a metaphor for for transgender acceptance. Um, you know, thank among, you, Wachowskis. You really, you really clarified things. that for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's like watching, as you said in your review of Demolition Man. You know, at the time we we're like, "Hey, wow, Sylvester Stallone blowing things up," and let's laugh at this this future that they've concocted. And then fast forward to now, and you're like, Ugh. "Yeah." Yeah, it's it's not going to be too long before you you know you say the wrong thing and uh, you'll get fined a, a a credit for a violation of the verbal morality statute. You know, <laughs> and you, you <laughs> ball breaking. Ball. Yeah, <laughs> I just love I love that bit where he needs to wipe his ass and he's just like, I need some paper. Thing, <laughs> he just starts swearing. <laughs> but I also have to commend you um, for your description on how the three seashells work, 
and for God's yeah. sake, don't be. <laughs> no, well done. Yeah, <laughs> some some absolute um, you know legend has has really sat down and worked out how they they should function. Like there's really? there's a video on YouTube for yeah. Like just look up how how would the three seashells work, um, and it will tell you exactly how you should use them. But it sounds painful, and it sounds like it could go horribly wrong if you you yeah. you know misjudge it. You know, I it's not something I, I want to do. No, I don't think I'm going to trust that. You know, you can call yeah. the practice archaic and old fashioned, but hey, it works. It works. It works. It gets gets the job done. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like with with all of this, you know, it, I don't really trust what the Wachowskis are trying to retroactively make the the Matrix about. But like, mm. as as far as the original film goes, like I was happy to just take it as a, you know, breaking free of the the control that, that okay. the world tries to put on you and being your own person. Like I think that's a pretty good, pretty good message for a lot of people, I sure. guess. Um, but well, yeah, if, so sorry, on you go. I was. I was just thinking, it, I likened the whole plot to that movie, The Island. Remember that one uh, with uh, Scarlett Johansson and uh, Ewan McGregor, where they were clones, and then they realized that they were clones, and then they wanted to free the clones. And at the end of that movie, when you see all of these clones emerge out in, yay, they're free. But you're kind of asking, well, now what? You have no skills. You have no, how are you going to survive in this real world? Yeah. Uh, so I look at the Matrix the same way of like, okay, you've freed these people who are, as as um, Cypher says, ignorance is bliss, living in this, you know, dreamland, whatever, being used as batteries. But you free them into the real world, and now they gotta, you know, scratch a living in less than desirable conditions, mm -hmm. running for their lives. Like, what would you rather have? Like. You yeah, th th this is uh, yeah, this is what I like about this film because, like, essentially, what it does is it presents you with lots of different like viewpoints on mm -hmm. on life and the world, and you know, Cipher's viewpoint, as you find out later in the movie, is that perhaps it's better not to know the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as he says, per you know, ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's better to to live in happy ignorance and just live that comfortable life. With mm -hmm. someone else controlling you, as long as you're not aware of it, because you can just um, ignore the the horrifying reality of the world exactly. outside the matrix. Um, and I I don't entirely blame him mm -hmm. for feeling that way, because as he explains, like the the light, the world <laughs> on the outside is kind of shit. Like they mm -hmm. eat the same crappy food every day. There's there's mm -hmm. no comforts or enjoyment or anything like that. It's just a battle to survive. Mm -hmm. um, you know who who wouldn't get ground down by that eventually. For sure. Um, so, you know, like, like, what would you rather have? It's a, it's a different, it's a very interesting philosophical question. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it's not even that deep. Like, would you rather live in ignorance or would you rather be free? And it's like, I think that's the whole thing that they're trying to promote in the movie. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess the point being that, you know, the, the path of freedom um, is not always the easier path true and you know to, to take that option is putting yourself in a lot of danger and it means mm -hmm. a lot of hardship and difficulty but perhaps the the rewards ultimately are worth it because um if you're not in charge of your own life if you're not in charge of your own destiny then what is really the point in existing well you're you're not a free person um and that's ultimately the goal of every living uh living entity yeah. Is, is to be free and, and not playing by someone else's rules for some kind of Machiavellian game. Um, very interesting concept. And again, lots of parallels with current uh, current trends. Yes, uh, very much so. Um, it's interesting as well, like throughout the movie, um, Neo keeps getting presented with choices. Mm -hmm. People people give him choices all throughout the, the, the film. Which mm -hmm. is like the key component of having free will is that you're able to make free choices Absolutely. and they actually they matter. Mm -hmm. um, right, going right back to when he talks to his boss, when his boss is like pissed off that he keeps showing up late for work, right? Um, and he says, to him, "You have a choice, Mister Anderson. You can either, you know, choose to show up for work each day on time, or you can choose to find yourself another job." Mm -hmm. um, it's all 
like within that context, within the matrix, it's all fake because really people don't have any free will because it's all mm -hmm. just an artificial environment. But it's presenting them the illusion of choice. And it's only when Morpheus starts presenting them with real choices, like do you take the red or the blue pill, mm -hmm. that things are really set in motion for him. Um, and I do love that scene where he, where he emerges from the matrix and he just sees this insane like dystopia in front of him, this nightmare yeah. world where people are all just like unconscious in their, in their pods, mm -hmm. you know, and he's, you know, he's like a, a newborn child almost, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's, he can't move properly. He's all plugged into this thing. He's got no hair on his body or anything like that. Uh, it's really weird and disturbing, uh, well, but what, would, what a great way. I was admittedly confused at that point. I'll, I'll concede that because mm -hmm. I was young and not very bright. But, you know, the, the scene jumps to that where, you know, first you see him floating in his um, cocoon, if you want to call that, and then it zooms out. And I thought for a second they had done that to him, uh, like Morpheus and team had done that to him. And I was just like, oh, what is this? But then yeah. as it goes on, you realize, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Um, and yeah, like what a thing to wake up to. That would that would be mentally hard to process. Like all of a sudden go from, you know, your your nice room there with the Christmas tree and then someone gives you a jolt and you wake up in a pile of jello and it's like, hey. <laughs> well, we, we've all done that after a rough night, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm missing an organ or two or maybe an eye. <laughs> I've got someone else's blood on my hands, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. It was another, not again. <laughs> no, no, God, please make it stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I love how the machine's reaction is just to flush him down the tube, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And then but then, the, yeah, yeah, again, so you get these gross. great bits. Yeah, totally. Um, but like, you know, he gets rescued and stuff, and and he's mm -hmm. he's lying there um, on the 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 ship, mm -hmm. um, and he's saying things like, you know, my eyes hurt, and it's like Morpheus explaining to him that you've never yeah. used them before. This is your actual real physical body, and it's just yeah. been lying in a, a tank its whole existence. And that I think, as a viewer, that's when you're starting to really get a a, a sense of what this is, like what's going on in this movie. And then your mind just starts to go, whoa, you know, like, yeah. this is weird. This is freaky. And then, um, you know, all of the plugs in him. And it's like, uh, yeah, the body horror yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it really is. And it's like, you know, when he wakes up, he's still got the, the big um, connection mm -hmm. in the back of his head. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it's, it's, they, they really show like it's this big, massive spike on the end of the, the probe that you have to put into a exactly. person. And it's like, that just feels like it would be agonizingly painful. Like, it's For going sure. right into your brain. Right. Uh, and to think, you know, uh, when more later on with the exposition, um, you see that humans are grown and you see like a, you know, an infant, newly born infant with already got the attachments in it. It's like, wow, how, how diabolical, you know, they would just, you know, grow a human and then just start sticking things into it right away. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. as, as the, you know, as the body grows, like, what do they do? Do they, you know, rip things out and stick things back in, you know, to accommodate for the, the size, the maturity, uh, is the, is the corp corporeal body like even aware that it's being augmented throughout its life cycle? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's like, I guess it's not ex explained too much. Um, I was just, I was going to say, again, I'm getting a slight clicking noise from your microphone. I don't know if there's something near it. Um, it could just be the way you're moving. Sometimes like headsets rattle or something like that. It's, okay. It's all right. Sorry. No, no, it's cool. Um, it happens all the time. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I, what I like is that they take the time to build Neo up once he's mm -hmm. been freed from the Matrix and mm -hmm. Morpheus explains to him as best he can what the Matrix really is. Um, they, they start to train him and build him up so that he mm -hmm. starts to learn how to fight and so on. Um, and I, I love that, that scene where, you know, he's going to learn um, Taekwondo or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Kung Fu. And it's like, yeah, like three seconds and it's been downloaded into his brain. Um, yeah, and he's just he's just like, yeah, I want more. And so he just is, spends like hours, hour after hour, just learning how every fight fucking technique works. It's great. 
I will say to this day, I still want that. Um, I had a colleague that I worked with years ago, and the guy was an absolute artistic genius, one of the best mentors that I ever had. And I was just like, oh, man, if I could just have that matrix thing where I could just you know, plug my head into the back of his head and download everything that he knows, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it would make life a lot easier, to be mm -hmm. sure. Um, I, but yeah, it, it's cool. Like, you know, you get to see, um, you know, he once he's assimilated all that knowledge, he has his fight with Morpheus. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the kind of, sorry to diverge, but this is the kind of thing that pisses me off about the trailer for the new movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like another sparring program that's identical to the first one. It's like, remember that really cool scene from the mm -hmm. first movie? Mm -hmm. Well, we're just doing the exact same thing again. That makes it cool, right? Just enjoy it. Don't question it. And it's like nostalgia. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. And it's it's mm -hmm. kind of like the same deal as Ghostbusters Afterlife. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man? Remember mm -hmm. the Ecto One? Remember the Proton Packs? Like we're just mm -hmm. gonna give you all that same stuff again. You know, it, it didn't. It doesn't have the same impact the second time around. Yeah. Um, and it, it, sure. it's one of the yeah one of the many reasons I'm a bit worried about this new film. Um, I just I hope it's good, but damn man, it, it's not filling me with with confidence here. I just really feel like the the original Matrix uh, was a very standalone movie, and I you know I don't know what I I'm, I think it's pretty much common knowledge that the Wachowski brothers had a a trilogy or an extended universe to explore. Uh, but, you know, I just think that the movie, the original Matrix had a beginning, a middle and an end. And, you know, that the story was told. Uh, but, you know, Hollywood, um, you know how much they hate making money. So let's make a sequel. And it's it's like carrying on a joke too long. It, it, it just loses its its luster. I, I think as well, like coming back to something 20 years later is mm -hmm. a pretty tall order. Mm -hmm. um, and make it good. Like the one of the few ones I can think of that worked was Cobra Kai, and oh yeah, again that's like taking essentially a new story and just like taking some of the original characters and building off that. Um, but something like this, yeah, like the the Wachowskis haven't produced a good movie in like fifteen years. So see the writing um, on the wall, boys. Yeah, it, it very much, and so yeah, I'll go into it with an open mind, man. But like, I'm not, I'm not too hopeful. I'll um, better yeah. bring a bottle of toilet duck with you, just in case. More than one. I'll bring some okay. brake fluid as well, you know, as a oh. chaser. Oh, that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, someone's mentioned there. Yeah, V for Vendetta is probably the last good movie they made. Mm, uh, okay. I think, I think, yeah, that's what I've heard. Trinity's the new one, and Morpheus is now the transgender Morpheus Jr. Mm. I don't know about the second bit, but like, yeah, apparently Trinity might be the new one. Well, admittedly, um, um, like I said to you earlier, um, I haven't even seen the trailer because I just don't care. Uh, I didn't go see Ghostbusters, even though I love the original. You know, the trailer got me interested, but, you know, when I saw your review, I was like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah. I've, I've sworn off movies altogether. Uh, after Snake Eyes just essentially broke my heart, I just made a vow, never going to the theater ever again. You guys, I'm... I'm Happy to be a grumpy old man and say all the best movies were in the 80s and 90s. And that's it. I think, uh, well, I can definitely re recommend Arcane to you. That was really fucking good. Now, uh, correct it's a TV me. show, not a movie. Okay. Because I saw it, and or I saw your, your video on it, and I was like, wait a second. That character looks awfully familiar. Wait a second. These are League of Legends characters. Yeah. Vi. You know, uh, with her big gun and the tattoo and everything. I was just like, okay. Uh, I didn't even know it was a standalone game, Arcane or something. I mean, I, I I'll be honest. I know fuck all about League of Legends, so I, I got nothing to base it on. I was just purely going into this as its own thing, mm -hmm. um, and and as a piece of standalone storytelling, I thought it was fantastic. Like the characters mm -hmm. were great, really well developed. Um, yeah, there's definitely strong female characters in it, but they don't. They're not there to just belittle the male characters. You know, the mm -hmm. the, the male characters do their own thing, and and uh, they've got their own stuff going on. Um, you know, it's fairly equal and well well balanced, and it tells a good story. Are you um, saying it's not as good as uh, Masters of the Universe? 
I mean, what is really true? I, I don't think I can even compare Masters of the Universe to anything. Mm. <laughs> so. Honestly, it took a lot to get me to watch part two. I just did it out of morbid curiosity. I thought, well, I did the first part. I, I should probably review it. Maybe it's going to be better. Who knows? That calls for a bottle of synthetic motor oil. Yeah, it was it was garbage, you know. <laughs> but it's like, what can I expect from the first part? Right, and to um, think that they keep they keep making them. Like, obviously, Kevin Smith, you know, what what has become to, of him? Like, he was the chosen one. Okay. He was he was supposed to bring balance to the geekdom, and look what he's become. All right, um, it really is that that whole saying: like, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Um, and there Absolutely. he is, yeah, for sure. Or you become uh, the head of Lucas Arts or Lucas Studios, Lucas Films. Yeah, like. it was nice when it was Lucas Arts. It was a, a nice, friendly place. Now it just actively hates you as Lucas Film. Uh, but it, anyway, I, I digress. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's a topic for another time. Yeah, God, we could we could get down the rabbit hole with this one, with a, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I do love that fight scene between Neo mm -hmm. and Morpheus. It's the first time you see Keanu Reeves unleashed. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because it's pretty clear, like he's he's definitely the better fighter of the two actors and mm -hmm. so he's doing the lion's share of the work to try and mm -hmm. make morpheus or to make Lawrence fishburne look good <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know give give fishburne his, his due for a bigger oh, yeah. guy who's obviously a bit older like he he holds his own all right for sure for sure i mean and then when he does you know they replay the same thing again where he jumps up you know abnormally high into the air they do the freeze and then move and it's like at that point you were cool to see that that visual again that you had seen Carrie Ann Moss do at the beginning but it wasn't it hadn't worn out its visual welcome you know what I mean it was, yep. just, it was the, cool. there's, that was a great line from uh, from Fishburne as well mm -hmm. you know when he's, he's beating Neo down mm -hmm. and Neo can't understand why he can't beat him mm -hmm. and, and he's like do you think my being stronger and faster has got anything to do with my muscles in this place right and he pauses and he's just like do you think that's air you're breathing now? Hmm. And he just goes, yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was, it, the delivery was fantastic. And so good. It, it's, it must be a strange thing to try and wrap your head around. You know, mm -hmm. this, this stuff that feels so real to me um, right. isn't. And it's just, um, it's my mind that controls all of this. It's nothing to do with the strength of my body. Mm -hmm. and if I believe that I'm twice as fast and twice as strong as, as this guy, then I am. Well, I think it's also being able, to, they know something that your average Joe in the matrix doesn't know. Like, it's like they've discovered a cheat code of like, oh, listen, you know what? I can jump from rooftop to rooftop if I yeah. do this. Uh, and not everyone would know that unless they were instructed. Mm. Yep. Uh, I love this line as well. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I fucking love as well that Team America parodied this when Samuel Jackson's <laughs> fighting. Because <laughs> it was it was taking the piss out of all those people that keep mm -hmm. mixing him up with Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> um, and so that's his final line where he's like, come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. And the exactly. guy just comes in and fly kicks the top of his head right off. <laughs> God, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, can I put in a request that we discuss that movie at some point in the future? I honestly, Team America is legendary. It's it's a movie that would never ever get made now. Absolutely uh, not. God, God, it's glorious. I would love to discuss that if I wasn't so afraid of you getting um, blacklisted and taken off of YouTube because you obviously yeah. can't discuss it. We, but, we'd have to speak in code, I think, to, to um, discuss most of the things that happen. <laughs> yeah, and if we don't play the, the theme song at least 10 times, like on full volume and rock out, then yeah. you're kind of missing out. America! Oh, fuck, fuck yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming back to save the motherfucking day, yeah! Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so many great moments. Yeah, it gets in your head and then it sticks there like an earworm, but you don't really mind because it's funny. No, it's great. It's it's such a catchy movie. Just everything about it is great. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, with the Matrix, um, <clears throat> I, I think what they need to do then is take Neo to visit the Oracle. Yes, because yeah. um, that's gonna that's gonna tell him like what his destiny is. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like that whole scene. I, 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 the the bit with the kid with the spoon is just really weird because the mm -hmm. kid's not a very good actor and stuff. Right. But, 
Um, yeah, I love the the Oracle is just this like housewife mm -hmm. who just looks like the most like plain normal person you could imagine. Um, and then, yeah, she does that whole thing when he breaks the the vase that's that's on a shelf beside him, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Oh, what's what's going to really mess with you later is." Would you have broken it still if I hadn't I said anything? Meant, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I actually want to give a call out to the overall um, aesthetic that they used because uh, I was just really picking things up watching it again. Um, it, I, I hesitate to use the term steampunk, but, you know, this is supposed to be in the, uh, you know, in the future, uh, 2199, as they put it. Uh, but, you know, when you see their setup that uh, Tank is using, um, Everything is like so mechanical, like overly mechanical. They had like gears and belts in order to uh, dial the telephone, you know, yeah. uh, which was a rotary dial phone. Everything seemed very like cobbled together from like ancient parts. Uh, there, there was nothing overly um, electronic or whiz bang about it. It was all very well steampunk. And the chairs that they were in were looked slapdash and and haphazard uh and then the environments that they're in like why did the oracle live in such a you know for lack of a better term ghetto environment uh but it, it had an atmosphere uh, it just made it seem very non-threatening which i thought was a, a a cool aesthetic i i i really like that because you know you, you hear about someone like the oracle and you think oh man it's going to be this big regal you know religious type person mm. you're going to find mm. them in some you know crazy temple or something like mm. that um i know it's the exact opposite it's just mm -hmm. just standard apartment you know just a, just a nice homely little place she's baking yeah. cookies when you meet her mm -hmm. um just the, the kind of like nice old lady that you, you you would have met as a kid exactly you know just the last person in the world that you would think would be something like this and that's that's fine i like that i like that cool. whole idea Contrast um, that to the architect, is it? Um, was, yes. Who was it in the second one? That's where the movie just completely lost me. You know, it was in this, you know, Apple type clean room with multiple televisions. And, you know, other than that, there was blank. And then the guy just goes on this rambling, sanctimonious monologue. And I was just like, oh, for God's sakes. You know, maybe I'm not smart enough to appreciate the, where this movie is going, but um, I'm bored. The yeah, I mean it's an interesting one because the whole mentality of the architect is that he is the most machine-like of machines. Right. You know, he is there to just balance the the matrix and, mm -hmm. and and keep everything running, and so he doesn't see anything in terms of human emotion or anything like that. So it would make sense that his his place of residence is just it's completely lacking in personality. He is sure. just there to do his job and run his function. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, again, he speaks in very precise, um, you know, like complex convoluted language, because again, mm -hmm. he, he would have no concept of like, well, that's not how humans communicate with each other mm -hmm. anymore. Um, okay. And he, like you say, he does, goes on this big, you know, like um, philosophical rant and it's mm -hmm. got, loads of really complex high flying language in it mm -hmm. because again that's just how he sees the world mm -hmm. um but it does kind of speak to that slightly larger problem that the the second matrix film had where it just kind of disappeared up its own arse it was so pretentious exactly um, and it's i think there's that fine line i think you walk with films like this where mm -hmm. you you want to deal with interesting um ideas like different philosophies and stuff and and you know, be in sci-fi, quite mm -hmm. complex ideas. But if you present it in such a convoluted way, you're just going to come across as really smug and pretentious. And I think oh, that's sure. where the, the movie fell, fell short for me, probably for a lot of people as well. Well, I'll give it a, a plus one because they rode Ducatis in it, and I'm personally biased towards Ducatis. And mm -hmm. it also had uh, Daniel Bernhardt as one of the agents. Love that guy. He's a... Uh, He's yeah, he's an upgraded kind of age, isn't it? It's one of yeah. the bigger ones. Yeah, but yeah, he's always a, he always plays a henchman, or um, you know, like a secondary character all yeah. the time. But uh, just fantastic martial artist. Yeah. No, that's cool. And um, you know, the the whole point of Neo's meeting with the the Oracle is that she basically says, "You're not the one." It's Which not your is time. interesting, because if you think about it. Because he does end up being the one, 
Mm -hmm. Like, was she, was she trying to do a reverse psychology thing to him to try and make him believe that he's the one? You know, what was the purpose? Because if she is this well, all-knowing nor uh, oracle, I think she was kind of psychologically pro like prodding him. If because the one of the things she says to him is that um, you're you've got the talent, but it's like you're waiting for something, mm -hmm. and he's like, what? And she says, another life, maybe, almost like you have to die and be and come mm -hmm. back in order to be the one. And what does he do? Well, he gets killed by Smith right. um, at the end of this movie. Smith shoots mm -hmm. him in the chest, and mm -hmm. then he resurrects himself and comes as, that's when his power as the one finally manifests. So what she said was completely correct. Um, but she also warns him that, uh, you know, he he's going to, have to sacrifice himself to to mm -hmm. save Morpheus, or as mm -hmm. she puts it, he's going to have to make a choice mm -hmm. between saving himself or saving Morpheus. Mm -hmm. And if she told him that he was the one, he wouldn't have chosen to sacrifice himself because he would have thought he was too important for that. Okay. So it's almost like he had to not believe that he was the one in order mm -hmm. to put himself at risk mm -hmm. to get killed, ultimately resurrect himself and realize his full power as the one. So she told him... As Morpheus said when he left mm -hmm. the room, she told you exactly what you needed to hear. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, good call. So, I mean, it, it's a, it's a it's a weird way it works out, but like, there's a kind of logic to to how this stuff is done. Um, and this is this is something I do appreciate about the first Matrix movie. It it balances out like some quite high-minded concepts like that without it ever mm -hmm. coming across as too pretentious or too. Mm -hmm. um, too intellectualized, mm -hmm. um, so that th that is something I definitely appreciate about this movie. It walks that fine line just perfectly. Exactly, like it, the, the concepts were very new and different and exciting at the time, uh, but it was you could still grasp it once you got on board with what mm -hmm. was going on. Yeah. Um, and then the, yeah, that's where the second one lost me. Again, like I'll fully concede that maybe I'm just not smart enough for movies like this. I, I think it's just it's the way it's presented. It's mm -hmm. because ultimately the the concept it gives you isn't too um, mind blowing, but it mm -hmm. just does it in such a weird way that it's hard to wrap your head around what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, like so with this one, um, you know, it, it takes you through that whole um, process. Like they they are leaving the place. Mm -hmm. um, but Cypher's betrayed them, and so the agents come in, they capture Morpheus and take him prisoner. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I, I love that whole scene where Cypher is the first one to make it out, and mm -hmm. so the rest of them are trying to escape. And, you know, he, he's killed the two operators in the, the Nebuchadnezzar ship. Exactly. Which always, which... It's such a weird fucking name for a ship, but yeah, okay. Well, it's from the Old Testament. Um... Mm. Yeah. Um, I always just thought, like, oh man, there's there's got to be biblical references that are easier mm -hmm. to say than that. But yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, like he's he's there, and I love how he just callously kind of kills people mm -hmm. just by disconnecting them. Mm -hmm. Like he kills um, Apoc, mm -hmm. and then Switch. Um, and you know, it always stuck with me that moment where she looks up at Trinity and she's like, "Not like this," mm -hmm. and then she just gets killed. Like yeah, it's yeah. so it's so unfair. Yeah, for that sure. Person should just be ended like that, and they can't mm -hmm. even do anything to protect to, to exactly. prevent it. And I just thought, like, I love that line that she gives of like, not like this. It was just such a cool way of saying, you know, I may be on my knees physically, but I'm not. I'm not going out like this. Um, yeah, like this. This isn't how I wanted to go. I wanted to be out. You know, I wanted to be dying, fighting or something. I wanted mm -hmm. to die for some reason. Just, just executed just like, like that. that. Um, um, but I always there was a blink and you'll miss it almost like the way that they did the editing but uh, when when they realize that they're in trouble and then mouse grabs those two guns yeah. uh, <laughs> and it was just like before you could really like what is he shooting no it that's it i'm like so i want to know like what uh, chat help me out like you know uh, well it was the they, um it was the the agents and uh, swat team members at the doorway so right. like he, he knew that they were right outside, and so he's right. like, okay, I'm I'm going to try and hold them up as long as I can. Yeah, Obviously, they just fire through the door and gun them down. But what were those guns that he was firing? Were they just modified for the movie? I like, I want to know. They looked cool. Oh, like, them. Oh, yeah, okay. like he had these dual machine pistols with the drum magazine that went the, around his hand. And the, the 
yeah, they looked like Uzis or something like that, mm. or MP7s with mm. with, with um, big cylindrical magazines on the bottom, mm. like the kind of things that have got like 200 rounds in them or something. Right. Um, because I, I guess they must have been fairly lightweight because that actor is not a big dude. Like exactly. He would be struggling to lift anything bigger than that. Well, like when he reaches into his trunk to pull them out, it's like you see some bullet belts in there, and those all look like um, either... Uh, you know, 300 blackout or, or 308 rounds. And it's like, mm, whatever he's firing, I hope it's, uh, I hope he can handle it. But It's what a way to go out the way, dual wield and machine pistols yeah, like, going out in a blaze yeah. of glory. Yeah. Like the, if you have to go, that's the way to do it, man. <laughs> Amen to that. That's why I yeah. have two vectors. Cause that's how I want to go out. So yeah, this, this, uh, see what's happening right now. This is what I told you was going to happen. People that come in like halfway through the stream. We, we did a poll earlier on. Mm -hmm. Should I wear the aviators or should I wear the Agent Smith glasses? Because it seemed like the thing to do. And everyone voted for Agent Smith. So this is where I'm wearing them. Uh, well, so there you go, Chris G. You got your answer, my friend. Well, when you have a multi monitor setup, you know, you got to protect yourself from the UV and the blue light. The radiation, and, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also I, a virus of unknown origin. Yeah, unspecified my, virus of unknown origin. This is for, for my safety. Let's just put it out. I mean, shit, man. I'm in Scotland in December, right? I am getting more UV radiation from this monitor right now than I get from the fucking sun. I'm with you on that one. We are, <laughs> we're in rainy season right now, and it's. Uh, it gets a little bleak. Oh, it does, man. Honestly, because um, this is the time of year I'd normally go away somewhere like sunny, and wouldn't you know it? Can't do that, so I'm stuck oh, no, here. Man. No, not unless you uh, are plugged into the Matrix, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, I get you. Hey, um, I'm not going to say anything that might get you canceled. Mm. So. No, nah, no, nah, it'll happen sooner or later. Trust me. <laughs> no, all this gets uploaded to my second channel. That's why it's expendable. You see, oh, so we can say whatever we want here. Oh, really? Well, then, let me get out my notepad here. Yeah. busting shit. I um, I I did like the big fight between morpheus and smith you know right. like in a bathroom of all places but um but it was you interesting know, he he didn't do very well like lawrence fish like he his fighting style wasn't as good as it was in the training room you know what i mean mm -hmm. like smith like smith is obviously an agent you can't beat an agent but you know he got uh, morpheus got pounded didn't really get to deliver any blows of his own substantial yeah he, he was very um, very slow mm -hmm. and very heavy looking. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's just because he was injured already and like okay. it slowed him down a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to say. But yeah, it was a, it was a much slower, clumsier kind of fight than he had with Neo. And I don't know if that's just because Keanu Reeves wasn't there to make him look good. Oh, okay. You know, because Hugo Weaving obviously is not a martial artist either. Like he sure. does... He, his his fight with Neo in the subway is really fucking good, but like he's clearly yeah. not at the same level as as Keanu. Maybe um, uh, so Morpheus should have downloaded the Jason Bourne program about how to done. fight how to fight in a bathroom in close quarters. Yeah, yeah. Um, but either way, he gets taken prisoner, and mm -hmm. um, I I really like that um, you know that scene where Smith is talking to Morpheus about. You know the, the the whole history of the matrix how um yeah. humans define their reality through misery and suffering like they which, tried to make a version of the matrix where everyone was happy and it was a total disaster which is so interesting what an observation or mm -hmm. uh, you know just a comment to make because it leaves you thinking of like hmm that's 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 a fair argument uh, as a Scottish person, right, it resonated with me on a deep spiritual level because we okay. do define our reality in terms of misery and suffering. <laughs> well, <laughs> microwave kebab. You know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's misery and suffering right there in a little microwave box. <laughs> who else would have, like, not only bought it, but attempted to eat it you know, by the yeah. but a true Scotsman? So, cheers. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. It was quite the experience, let me say that. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say as well, what's his name? Mudcrab 
so it's the last day of work for his for the whole year for him. Um, anyone want to go in and tidy up my desk so I can stay here? Just just leave your desk, man. Like if there's yeah. food in it or whatever, you can get it next year. It'll be all right. It'll be better than that kebab I ate. Yeah, but yeah, Maybe. like I um, good on you for like finishing up now for the year. Like it's only it's mm-hmm. only the sixteenth of December, and you've got like you know a couple of weeks now. A couple of weeks um, off work. It's all right. I'll say, like, depending on how much you like or dislike your your colleagues, I would suggest, you know, before you leave the office, unscrew your office chair, drop a couple of frozen sh- uh, shrimp down the stem, and then put the, the seat back on. And as it just starts to defrost and rot, your coworkers are going to go nuts trying to figure out where that horrid smell is coming from. There you go. Maybe you should stick with what your first answer and just frozen shits. Just <laughs> put them in. Yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to touch it. But, uh, yeah, uh, there's a question here as well. Uh, Drinker plans on seeing Spider Man. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to see it on Saturday. Okay. Uh, so I'm I'm definitely not going to be the first in line to see it. Um, it was a couple of my mates. So like that was when we were all available to go see it. So um, Saturday is the day. So the plan is I'm going to go see it about five o'clock. I think I'm going out for dinner afterwards. Get drinking, and uh, then I'm then I'm done to offer my thoughts. Wow, Maybe I'll welcome. I'll do a live stream when I get home. It depends if I can see my monitor. I don't know. You're um, allowed to go out to dinner in Scotland. We we're allowed to do that, yeah. Uh, wow. Provided you provided you show the papers really? um, and and conform to all the regulations and all that stuff. Now, nah, to be fair, it's not yeah. as bad as as um, it might be made out to be. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think in Scotland, all you need to do is if you're going into a restaurant or something like that, just mm. like wear a face mask as you go in, and then you can go sit down at your table and that's it. Do whatever you want then. Yeah. I mean, um. Over but here, yeah, it's it's all about papers and and stuff. So. Oh really? I, yeah. My attitude is uh, it sounds like a pretty good idea, um, but how about I give you the. <laughs> And you, and you can cram your frozen food up your ass. <laughs> yeah. Just go home and make yourself a microwave kebab, mate. You'll be fine. Well, the drinker uh, recommends. Yeah, you know, usually I'll side with with your opinion on a lot of things, but that that kebab looked like I don't know. I, I would have to be pretty pretty low to consider yeah. that. No, no, just uh, avoid that. But. Um... I don't know. It's weird. Like I, th- I feel like in America, you guys have never really embraced the whole concept of doner kebabs. You call them like gyros or something, don't exactly, you? Exactly. Like, yeah. Something yeah. else. Yeah, like different fast food restaurants would have like wraps or or pita wraps or something. Um, Wendy's mm. used to have like a really really good one, uh, and then they discontinued them, and then McDonald's had them for a while. But uh, yeah. the way you were describing it, like you know the proper uh, wrap with lamb, yeah, no, we wouldn't. You don't see that here. Right. The the funny thing is, like, if you get it in a restaurant, like a proper mm-hmm. well-made one, it's actually mm-hmm. really nice. Oh, for sure. Like, like kind of like flame grilled lamb mm-hmm. on a skewer, like mm-hmm. in, in, you know, pita bread with salad and all the chili sauces and all that stuff. It's, it's pretty tasty. Well, I'll give not, them that. like I was in New York once and, you know, a friend you know suggested, let's get something to eat. I was like, like, where? Well, from that guy over there, like food vendor on the corner. Mm. Damn, that, that ended up being like the, the best sandwich I ever had. Mm. You know, it was just a dude there on the corner with his his cart. So, you know, I don't know what it's like in Scotland, but, you know, maybe there is like, you know, a portable trailer or something like that where this guy is just grilling them up and they're authentic and tasty. And those are the ones you want to have. In in Scotland, it would be from takeaways. Mm. Okay. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a different kettle of fish altogether. But okay. if you, you know... You've been out drinking, and and uh, it's like two in the morning, and mm-hmm. you, you want to get something to eat before you go home. Like, yeah, a kebab will sort you out, and okay. probably prevent you having a hangover the next day. So, I do recommend it. The drinker recommends kebabs. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like so, I, I think at that point in the movie, they, they've 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 got Morpheus prisoner and. Mm-hmm. They're gonna they're gonna use him to get access to the Zion mainframe. So they've got to try and they got to try and rescue Morpheus before he cracks and gives them the agents everything they need. Well, the second part do... of his his monologue that he was doing, like after he reveals what the other matrixes were, mm-hmm. I loved his uh, 
analogy uh, or, or um, yeah, analogy describing, you know what other species on this planet is like that, you know, and it was yeah. just such, it was just such a contemptible insult that he was giving, but the parallels, you couldn't deny them. Uh, yeah, like he, he compares humans to a virus. Mm -hmm. um, which, which would, you know, would, would go right in hand with the message of now. So just kill yourself, you know, because you're... Yeah, you're well, no, just, you know, live in the pod and eat the bugs. You'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll um, be happy. But what what's interesting is the, what Smith really wants from Morpheus is not to destroy Zion, but to actually um, escape into it. Exactly, because yeah. he knows that if, if they stamp out the resistance, then there's no reason for him to still exist. Mm -hmm. um, and and so what he wants is to get into Zion himself mm -hmm. um, and escape the Matrix. And I, I love again when you're talking about monologues from Smith, like when he's <laughs> he's like. Uh, you know, complaining about what he hates about the Matrix, and he's like, mm -hmm. "It's the smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel saturated Rated. by it." <laughs> you know, and then just your stink. I like, I can yeah. taste your stink. And you're like, yeah. "Oh, hey, hey, that looks like racism to me." I don't know, but it, but it's interesting because he's a, a program that's got enough, like he's got a level of awareness to the point where he he recognizes his own existence he's self-aware mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. hates what he's there for he hates yeah. humanity but he also hates what he's been assigned to do mm -hmm. um and so he wants to preserve his own existence mm -hmm. so it's kind of an interesting concept really this thing that's almost grown beyond the control of the machines like he's got no particular loyalty to them they're just a means to survival for him right it's almost like uh rutger hauer um in blade runner of like I want more life. Yeah, in a way, and it, it harkens all the way back to like the the Frankenstein's monster, mm, the same yeah. concept of like something that you've created becoming aware of what it is and mm. trying to make its own decisions and trying to mm. preserve its own life. Right. You know, all of these things, like it's all the same concept of like a, a thing. Um, you you can create these things that become more and more sophisticated and more and more powerful. Mm -hmm. to the point where you're no longer in control of them. Just like exactly. the humans lost control of the machines, mm -hmm. so the machines are losing control of Smith. Mm -hmm. And it's like this cycle that just endlessly repeats. Like we create, keep creating tools and weapons that, that mm -hmm. are going to help us, theoretically, to the point where they, they realize that they don't need to serve us anymore and they turn against us. Well, it's a premise uh, that's been used in sci-fi literature, like going back to the 60s and you know the Terminator the whole thing was was based on that of like these things that were supposed to make your life easier and then they become self-aware and conscious and uh it that's a scary concept scary yeah. thing to, to think of it, it it always has been um mm -hmm. and it's it's that bedrock idea of like our our intellect and our inventiveness working against us mm -hmm. ultimately and us creating the thing that's ultimately going to replace us Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's a, it's a great universal idea and a great universal fear, mm -hmm. um, and it, I think it's it's great that it plays out within the context of the Matrix as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really cool concept, which is um, what I really appreciated about it. Because in other movies, like in Terminator or something, you know, it's like this physical war. The humans know that the machines are now their enemy, but you know, so there's this bitter irony about it. Um, but in the Matrix. The humans have been subdued and are victims or slaves, and they don't even know it. Like that's like the ultimate victory for the machines. I think. Mm -hmm. This is interesting as well. Someone's mentioned that uh, all AI in the Matrix have got free will. Smith, Smith wasn't the only one who rebelled against his programming. Mm -hmm. That is true because you got characters like the Merovingian, who was a program obviously designed for something else, but like he became self-aware and he's just mm -hmm. like almost like a, a mercenary. <clears throat> Same with the Keymaster or whatever they call him, the, the guy who who can get them into anywhere. Oh right. Um, okay. These are programs created for a purpose, but they move beyond it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the other one, uh, Agent Smith's only purpose was to destroy the anomaly. At the mm -hmm. end, Neo wins by letting Smith kill him, so Smith could fulfill its purpose and be cancelled. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a lot you can say about the the third Matrix movie uh, in terms of like fate and destiny and and like the purpose of Smith and the purpose of the one. Um, 
uh, probably a discussion for another day because there's a lot to unpack with that film. Mm. Um, I just love that the Drona Kebab debate is still going on as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> we've like sparked a whole like topic of conversation that's just going on outside the the film discussion it's great you know what now (laughs) now i'm just curious now i feel like i need to look around here maybe on doordash or something like that and try to find a donor around here honestly man you you need to come over to scotland right i'll take i'll take you out for a takeaway and we'll get a donor kebab and like it'll change your life maybe not for the better but it will change things well I think what I'm more afraid about is, uh, you know, the kind of people that I would see outside of a takeaway at 2 a.m. in the morning. There, um, yeah. I mean, there's there's probably a one in three chance that you're going to get knifed. But, like, that that's not bad odds. I would okay. say it's all right. It's, it's worth going for. It. All right. Well, if I walk away with, you know, maybe a few busted teeth, then I can say that was a good evening. Yeah, it's fine. As long as you got the kebab at the end of it, then you've achieved True. your aim true like some of those pictures that you put up there where you see a spilt one like on the street or something like oh that's a waste i i kid you not man i i was in edinburgh um and our my train home got cancelled so i was trying to get a taxi and Mm. just the (laughs) i saw the saddest sight i think i've ever seen a dude who like dropped his kebab onto the pavement and he was just picking up bits of it and eating it (laughs) Okay. Well, and that dude wasn't me. I swear. Oh, hey. I just like to have a thought. No, I've never reached that level yet. (laughs) I can, I can understand being that drunk where you're just like, uh, you know, and you just throw all sense of decency or modesty out the window, and you just just kind of stumble and eat it. Um, That would just be funny to see. Yeah, it's almost like kebab commitment. Yeah, that, that dude was going to get his fucking kebab in him no matter what. And to be fair, it probably benefited in the, in the long run because right. like he probably woke up without a hangover the next day. But yeah, man, sometimes you got to put the graft in. And it, right. it means doing things. <laughs> doing things that make you not sleep well at night. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I When I was younger, uh, uh, my boss enjoyed tequila and cigars and that's the first time i had ever tried both and Mm. i did it because i wanted to be you know a team player but i must have done something wrong because not only did you know the the stuff i put in my gas tank smells better than this tequila it was Mm. horrible and then you know i took a puff on the cigar and then the room just started spinning and uh yeah i i yacked into the garbage can of my office and it was uh, it was gross i don't think i ever want to do that again I, I've <clears throat> I have never heard of tequila and cigars. Like brandy and cigars, I've definitely heard of, but yeah. I've never done tequila and and cigars. Bad combination. Um, yeah, I, um, I I must admit, like I I do because I don't smoke, but like mm-hmm. um, I, I've had a cigar on occasion. Okay. And it's great because it always makes me feel like a fucking World War Two general. Like I'm mm-hmm. chomping down on a cigar, like drawing up a battle plan or something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's fucking cool. <laughs> or, you know, or like Dutch from Predator, you know. Where you're yeah, just, uh, yeah. Chomping on this big cigar. All right, tell us what do we got to do. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're you son of a bitch, you set us up. up. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a great story, actually, behind the scenes about that. I'm um, mm-hmm. sorry to go off on a fucking random tangent, no, but um, good. it was um, it was Carl Weathers like talking about this, and um, like obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger is fond of his cigars, mm-hmm. and um, Carl Weathers was like, "No, I'm I'm a proper like athlete, you know. I train hard, and I I you know only put good things in my body." Okay. But like sometimes when Arnold would walk by with one of his cigars in his mouth, I was thinking I'd said to him like, "Man, that that's that smells pretty good actually. The tobacco, mm-hmm. the smoke, it smells really rich." Mm-hmm. Um, and then so he um, he got up one day and like Arnold had sent over like a, a big box of cigars for him as a gift. Wow. Okay. And he's like, "Yeah, I got started on them and just never looked back. They're fucking great." <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'd... Props to anyone who enjoys that and is like a, a collector or anything like that. But I just have kind of like a Pavlovian response whenever I see tequila and cigars and just back away slowly. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. Uh, it, it's the trick in not inhaling it and just tasting it in your mouth rather than. Yeah, but no one, no one told me that. So I think. All right. Were you smoking it like it was a cigarette, like proper, well, like down into the lungs? Well, I don't smoke either. Uh, so I didn't even know what you're supposed to do. No one told me like how to 
you know, actually smoke a cigar like, or a pipe or anything like that. So I know that I think that was my mistake. And when the room just started spinning, the best part is when my boss's wife came in to check on me to make sure I wasn't dead. And she, you know, I was like passed out on the floor and I just had like <laughs> dried yak down my face and she positioned, the garbage, she positioned the garbage pail by my head. So I'd be able to like uh, into it. And I remember like several hours later, I looked at myself in the mirror and I'll never forget that image. Just dried, crusty, expectant, you know, down my face. Just... Yeah, it's not, it's not a good way to be. Burns yeah. into your brain. You're like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like, like I say, I will say, if you if you consume them properly, if you just um, almost treat like a, a a cigar like a a wine that should be swirled in the mouth and then like it, it spat out or exhaled or whatever, then that's that's how you consume it, um, and it's pretty cool like that. But yeah, I would I would never properly inhale it like a cigarette. That's yeah, I can see why you passed out there. And speaking of drink. Um... Like I just, I like that little line when Neo comes over Cypher's shoulder and he's like looking at all of his monitors. Cypher goes, hey, you want a drink? Mm. Uh, you know, and then, you know, Neo drinks it. Like, <coughs> you know, what's this? It's good shit, huh? Uh, Dozer makes it. Uh, it's great for uh, cleaning engines and killing brain cells. Yeah, like any good alcohol. That's why I like toilet duck so much. But... Yeah, it's, it's great for clean, great for cleaning toilets and killing brain cells. Um, okay. But it kind of explains why Neo, as well, would be struggling with it so much because his mm-hmm. physical body's never had alcohol before. True, yeah. Like he, he's he's had it in the Matrix, but that's not mm-hmm. the same as actually drinking it for real in the real world. Mm-hmm. So, again, it makes sense that uh, he would have such a reaction to it. Plus, it's probably god awful gut rot moonshine, you know. But. Uh, Either that or it was a bottle of Lagavulin 16. Sorry. That's good stuff. That's, oh, the, that's, that's God himself has, oh. has provided you with booze, and, and it's that. I, I kind of had the same reaction the first time I tried it on your recommendation. Yeah. Ooh, that uh, I, I realized I don't go for that heavily peaty flavor. It's it's not a... Uh... Like if you're not familiar with whiskeys and you're you're a bit of a beginner, it's probably not the best thing to have. Okay. Um, I mean, like I say, I mean, I I really I enjoy it, but okay. I can see why it's not for everyone. Like, I mean, what's your like? What was your sort of thing of choice? Would it be like vodkas or beers? No vodka. Or, you know, in in my younger years, I would I would have some vodka, but I learned very quickly that if I had it on an empty stomach. It would give me like gut rot like crazy. Um, mm. And then like I, I was like maybe 18 or something when I tried gin. And that just smelled like, smelled and tasted like magic marker to me. And then uh, I later I just discovered I was a whiskey bourbon type of person. Uh, mm. And that's, that's what I stayed with. But uh, after this last hospital stay, um, I made, made certain commitments and promises to myself. And number one is I never want to touch a bottle or see a bottle ever again. So um, I haven't had a drop to drink since they discharged me, and uh, I don't miss it. No. No, well, respect for you, man. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I know, you know, obviously I joke around with, like, you know, drinking and stuff on streams, mm-hmm. but, like, for, for any person who's gone teetotal and, and just, you know, finished up with it, well, like, mm-hmm. I respect that 100%. Um, it's, it's, you know, you're adding years to your life, I'm sure. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have any problem with anyone who wants to have it. And like, I'm not going to go around trying to change anyone's mind. But, uh, yeah. Considering the fact that I came awfully close to circling the bowl this time, I thought some things have got to change if I can walk out of here, you know, and I was in there for 11 days. So yeah, like, uh, that, that of, would be enough to scare stuff. most people straight and sober mm-hmm. you know and, and it's funny that we're discussing the matrix uh because because i was um confined to a bed and i was also confined to my room the first day it was like six days later where i was actually able to get out of my bed to try and use the restroom for the first time and i almost fell over because my legs had felt so like 
atrophied, if you want to call it that. So that's why, you know, that scene when they say to him, uh, Neo, like, you've never used them before. Your muscles have atrophied. We're rebuilding them. Mm. It's like, I, I actually had that thought because like, wow, I can't even stand on my own legs. They're just so diminished. And that's so, after just like a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, yeah. I mean, they, they put these cool calf massagers on me to stimulate blood flow, but still I was walking around like a baby deer for a couple of days. So. Now I always remember like, um, it, it's amazing how quickly your, your body loses all this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure like a most, like a lot of people I've, I've broken bones in my time. I mm -hmm. broke my arm once and, um, it was a tragedy because it was my wanking arm and like, couldn't use it. Like it was in a, it was in a cast for, for okay. like several weeks. Okay. And, and so when they eventually took it off, um, obviously I hadn't used my arm for all mm. that time. I hadn't moved it or anything. And it was like, it was like a, you know, like a skeleton. It was so mm. thin. Like there was, there was yeah. no muscle or anything on it. Um, and that was just after a few weeks of, mm. of being in a cast. And it's just amazing how quickly you lose all of that stuff. Exactly. <clears throat> It's like, yeah, it's, it's weird. Like, it's almost like a stranger or something like that. It's like, how are you supposed to get the five knuckle chuckle out of this when it's not? <laughs> yeah, you just sit on it for a while. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. Tatiana, when are you working next? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to need your help on this one. <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, I, I, I guess that was where they were a little bit limited with mm. the Matrix. In that, mm. I, I think if this was done nowadays, they would probably CGI. Um, like they did with with Steve Rogers and sure. Captain America, like a really skinny yeah. body onto mm -hmm. Neo, mm -hmm. to to really give you that idea of like, oh, this is someone who's never really used their physical body before, right? You know, and make it make it a bit more um, believable. And I appreciated but, I mean, like the way they went about it, like with all of those acupuncture needles, because like the scene just you know cuts to that where you see him and he's just got how many needles in him, and you're just like, oh, that looks wrong. Yeah, uh, I'm getting great advice from chat as well. If you sit on the crapper using your knees as armrest, you get numb in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Imagine what a day would do. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, yeah. I've, Here we go. Best wankers day. are ambidextrous. <laughs> a man has to be flexible. Man, I, I, see, I'm right-handed. I don't even think I could do it with my left hand. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I will say as well. Like I love, uh, I love the scene where they go into Spring Morpheus from mm. from his imprisonment oh uh, that was gun porn part one that was just that? glorious um where, where neo and trinity just walk through the lobby and they set off the mm. metal detectors just open Holy their coats shit. and it's just guns everywhere yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the coolest song ever plays and yeah what a yeah. scene proper techno music on the go all slow motion um mm -hmm. and i love how you know they never bothered to reload like they've exactly. just got, they've just got a new gun every time. Away, like yeah. fucking who needs to reload stuff? Just get a new gun out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, and the, yeah, I loved it because the guards were using Spaz twelve shotguns, which is um, the one missing from my personal collection. I just I want to get one. Yeah, yeah but, a Spaz but, twelve seems like the kind of thing to have because it's from Terminator Two, Jurassic Park. Like exactly. <clears throat> And it's a cool I've, looking gun. It looks futuristic. Very. Um, but I've been told by people at my gun club that, yeah, they look cool, but you don't want one. They're just kind of, they don't operate or cycle as smoothly as, say, something like a Benelli M4. Um, but that's not the point. I just want it because it's, you know, it's been one of my favorite guns. I mean, I've got multiple replicas here, but yeah, I still want the real thing just out of principle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's well to live in a country where I could have things like that. <laughs> hmm. uh, I think over here you can probably get arrested just for having a replica. Really? Oh, probably. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like, what about if, like, if they decided like that you were someone that they didn't like? It's just like, yeah, you're you're not okay. allowed to have that because you could threaten someone with it. So you can't even have things like airsoft or Nerf guns or anything. I, I, you're probably all right with Nerf guns. I don't know about yeah. airsofts. Um, mm. I, I'm pretty sure, like, even to have an air rifle, like, they were looking to have some kind of, like, permit for that. Wow. You know, the kind of, like, yeah. things that kids used to use when I was a kid. Mm. Yeah, it's a total joke over here at this point. Wow. Okay. Well, it keeps you safe. Just think of that. You're, don't you feel safe? 
so safe. Yeah, okay. I'm trust well, the, the government's going to look out for me. Absolutely, <laughs> everything will be fine. <laughs> Uh, I, I know there was a news story where a guy got arrested in my hometown for having mm. a potato peeler. What? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I can only tell you it's real. Look it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, was he threatening a potato or... I, I like don't that? know. I don't know if the okay. police just, like, happened to, to do a stop and search and it's like, you've got a potato peeler. you got a license for that. Well, there's one know. step away from attacking people with fresh fruit. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's kind of hard to do a mass shooting with a potato peeler, but you know, assault. You find a way. That's 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 what we're doing. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, potato lives matter. They do. They do. They do. Absolutely. Especially sweet potatoes. Indeed. But during that scene, I mean, I just love the camera angles that they they did because who doesn't love a good minigun scene? You know. So not only does you know. Neo pull up with you know with the minigun, but they do that all in slow motion, and then the camera goes underneath, and you get you get the shells raining down. On yeah. You. Oh. So, because this is this is like one of the few times where you see a minigun properly deployed. Because mm -hmm. as, as cool as it is, and it's fucking incredible as it, mm -hmm. it is to watch, you know, films like Predator and Terminator Two, where they yeah. show like a minigun being like a a, a man portable weapon. It absolutely isn't. Like it needs like two fucking sixteen volt truck batteries just to run exactly. the thing. Not um, only that, like it has to be mounted because you know no human's really going to have the strength to withstand that. No, I mean I, I think like Arnold was able to do it in T two, just as big as he is, like he mm. could handle the the recoil from it. But nobody else on the cast or crew could hold it while it was okay. firing. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, not to mention the amount of ammo it chews through. Exactly. You know, you're you're going to go through like a couple of thousand rounds a minute. So the, oh, there's no man. way you'd be able to carry enough ammunition just to even run the thing. Jeez, and those rounds aren't cheap. So. Yeah, um, but man, it's beautiful to look at. It really is. But yeah, like this this was a movie that showed it mounted on a vehicle, so it made mm -hmm. sense. Is that one of the that one, That's one of a... several thousand you would need? Uh, exactly, and these are roughly two dollars a piece, so just uh, two U.S. dollars a piece. So think two dollars for one round. That, that's like, and just think of how fast something like that is firing. God damn! Got to have pretty deep pockets. Yeah, I, I remember the last time I was in Florida, I went to a rifle range, and um, I was like, you know, pick out the, the weapon you want, and it's like, how much ammunition do you want? I was like, well, <laughs> but I, I picked like two different guns and i was like probably 100 rounds a piece would do mm. to get me started um and did all that and it was like going to be 130 dollars i think it came to yeah. I was like, oh, fucking hell man <laughs> this mm -hmm. is expensive exactly. it's a lot of money to just piss away in the space of a few seconds but man yeah. it was worth it oh yeah it's fun as hell but yeah you know if you want i go... still maintain like the the m4 um which i'm pretty sure is what i got that's okay. like probably the best gun i've fired okay like just nicely balanced, mm -hmm. like the recoil is manageable, mm -hmm. um, nice and accurate. It's a great gun all around. Yep. Loved it. Yeah, I mean the, the rounds. That would be your M4 round right there, and yep. it's uh, not particularly big. Um, yep. And the recoil, like you said, is is very easy to manage. It's not so, big, but I wouldn't no. want it in me. No, no, not a, especially. Some of the hunting rounds that you can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. I, I did get a chance to fire an AK when I was over in Czech, the Czech Republic. Okay. Um, I I've never felt anything like it. Like mm -hmm. uh, even like because I was I was in a big group of us and there was there was one guy amongst us who was a proper big dude like really into his weightlifting and stuff and he mm -hmm. couldn't control it when it was on really? full auto. Yeah. The okay. the muzzle climb on this thing was insane. Okay. Um, just like, holding on to it as tight as he could, it just kept going up like that. Okay. By the end of the the magazine, it was up like you know, good twenty degrees. Just okay. Couldn't, couldn't keep it down. I um, mean, even that. I was doing it like squeezing it off in short bursts. It was just mm -hmm. climbing. Um, yeah, it was see, some gun like. That's why I'm a fan of the vectors, and so I've got two of them, uh, one in forty five and another one in ten millimeter, and just the the recoil mitigation system that they designed into it almost completely um, cancels out any recoil 
from the round. So you you get barely any muzzle really? line with those. Oh, it's especially the ten. Um, it's such a perfect candidate for that. So, so you could just hold it steady and just uh, very smooth cycling action. And plus, it looks cool. It's a vector. It, the vector is a cool gun. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Really so, futuristic. I don't need any more, but I feel obligated to have the entire collection. So uh, yeah. we'll we'll see what Santa has to say. <laughs> nice one. Uh, but yeah, the minigun in this movie, uh, mm -hmm. really cool. Um, yeah. And but here's yeah, a question, I, and maybe yeah. someone can answer this. Miniguns are kind of a spray and pray kind of thing. They're not very accurate, uh, and they're kind of hard to control because of the vibration. How did Neo not hit Morpheus? Because Morpheus was pretty much in the same line as the Asians were. I assume um, because it's mounted on the helicopter that you okay. can recoil. You, sorry, you can control the recoil more that way. Okay. Um, if if it's literally fixed to the deck, I would imagine you can you can kind of aim it as you as you need okay uh, but because whatever rig that they've got there i would assume it's designed to like compensate for the recoil to some extent sure. but i mean with all of the melee going down and like you had the water from the sprinklers coming down you just have all you know the, you see the bullet hits along the water on the floor you know visually it would be hard to stay on target and not accidentally you know nick morpheus I, I think so yeah like i assume like he's he's got this um heightened sense of perception that, okay. that you know you would expect as he's uh, you know gotten better at using the matrix and stuff and maybe that's why but okay yeah you could probably make the argument that like the the, the sheer like amount of firepower going on there probably would have hit morpheus at some point mm. um I, i'm not sure yeah you, you're probably right there though i i would never put like if I was trying to rescue someone from that kind of situation, I would not use a minigun to try and spring him. Put it exactly. that way. Minigun will go brrr, you know. Mm. If you ever want to watch something satisfying, just uh, have a few drinks and watch footage of A10 warthogs. Yeah, are... yeah, they, they've got a minigun that's like the size of a fucking uh, Volkswagen, isn't it? It's like, huge, just ridiculous. I love the concept that they built the gun pretty much first. And then they had to build some kind of conveyance to to fly this yeah. gun. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, it, it's going to look ugly as fuck. <laughs> Don't care. It's just, just it's all about the gun. It works. You know, it gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, I re I remember the, you know the the phalanx guns that you get on uh, on you know aircraft carriers things like that. Mm -hmm. They're de designed to shoot down enemy missiles. Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing one of them because. Um, like where I live, there's a big naval base nearby, mm -hmm. and like my dad used to work there when I when I was younger, um, and so we'd go along there, and they had the 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 phalanx guns. Like one of them had been removed from a warship, and it was in like a big warehouse. So you, the guy, the operator, could just like control it with like a, a radio control thing, really? almost like you would control like a little um, you know remote control car or something. You could turn wow. it, whatever. Um, and my dad just shouts to him, Jimmy, make it spin round. Mm -hmm. And so he just hits the button to, to make it fire. Obviously, there's no actual rounds in it, but the sure. noise of it spinning and the, oh. the, the feed mechanism going, it was exactly. absolutely deafening. Mm -hmm. um, just cool as fuck. For sure. Amazing piece of machinery. And it's just intimidating just to look at. It doesn't even have to do its job. You're just like, wow. Yeah. That's just an immense thing. It just yeah. reminded me of that scene. I don't know if you watched it but battleship did you see that that one yeah yeah i've seen that yeah so it's, it's a guilty pleasure of mine so i apologize in advance uh but the one scene you know where uh, he they're trying to take out the the alien on the ship and then um rihanna whatever is manning the gun station and she wrote yeah the and she goes mahalo motherfucker you know yeah. <laughs> blows him off the deck while what's his face is standing like right next to it or something and he's yeah. like totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like late in the movie when they're they're up on the the the, the fly bridge mm -hmm. um, when they open fire with the main armament. Mm -hmm. um, no, every single person on that bridge would have had their eardrums shattered by that. Oh, There's sure. no fucking way you can be up unprotected while those things go off. Big fifteen inch uh, main guns on a battleship. <sighs> nah, you're you're done. Like, 
<laughs> I, I did like that scene. Like as dumb as that movie is, like mm. watching a battleship take on a, an alien spaceship. Cool. It's <laughs> I don't satisfying. care. I mean, yeah. Who, when have you ever seen like a ship drop anchor and like drift Tokyo drift style? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like on. that. Absolutely, that would have just snapped the chain in an instant if For that sure. had happened. You know, but, but you know, I don't care. And then, oh, sorry, know. people were saying it's 16 inch. I thought they were 15 inch. I think the 15 inch was the um, the British standard during World War II. You Americans, you always have to go one bigger. Yeah, 16 inch uh, main guns on a Missouri on an Iowa class battleship. That's mm-hmm. fair dues. Yeah, that's. I mean, I just want the the Sea Whiz, you know, the the positionable uh, Gatling guns that they have. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Uh, Actually, I saw something not too long ago where a guy had actually modified his Tesla and he put a minigun on the front of it. Props to that. A guy. minigun on a Tesla? Mm-hmm. I'm all in. Yeah, yep. I Do just it. think that's probably the most offensive thing I've ever seen on the internet. Offensive, yeah. <laughs> offensive to anyone who's not me. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but I'm yeah. sorry, we've gone off on a tangent here yeah we, we well when we got to start talking about booze and weapons and stuff and yeah. battleships like fuck it i don't think anyone in chat is complaining no, it's good I mean, chat it's good chat want, indeed you want to make best friends man all you have to do is just like some of the best conversations i've had in recent weeks is when i go to the local sports store and complete strangers will just bust out a conversation they'll see like you know a patch that i'm wearing that is a brand name of my favorite pistol and they're like hey are you a sig fan and i'll go I am, and then you know, just like t- putting two Tamagotchis together or something like that. You just yeah. people just want to talk about it, share their thoughts. You learn things. No, it's great. It's it's like I say, it's a culture that we don't get much of mm-hmm. over here. You know, just safe. because that's we're safe. Yeah. yeah, as long as as long as the government decides we're safe, it's all right. Yeah, uh, well, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 different cultures. That, mm-hmm. that's the problem like america and, and the uk like completely different mindsets about all this mm-hmm. stuff so um it's just something i guess that we have to we have to live with over here but then you know like i say if i if i head over to the states for a vacation i can indulge in it and enjoy that sort of thing a little bit and it's great fun well you know? you're, and my the the door to the nerd lair is always open to the drinker. Yeah. And I have, <laughs> I, have, I have a few things that you might want to play with. Yeah. No, I just need to get over to the West Coast then and I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah. I can take you to our uh, gun club here. And uh, I've got uh, several several crates of ammunition that you can go through. Well, it'd be rude not to use it then. Well, you're, you're always welcome. It would be an yeah. honor. <laughs> it would be an honor to have a angry, gruff Scotsman you know, fire several thousand rounds through. Yeah, weapons. I'll take out my rage. I'll just aim at the target, pretend it's like the last Jedi, and just. Oh, you know. geez, um, I don't. Have, <laughs> I don't have that much ammunition. I'm sorry, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger gun. For sure. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it kind of it kind of brings us into the last part of the movie, I guess, mm-hmm. where they um, they spring Morpheus from his from his imprisonment, mm-hmm. and. Um, escape into a like a subway station and neo has to take on um agent smith by himself Mm -hmm. because he's you know he's he's destroyed the phone so there's no escape and the only option is for him to fight him and that that subway fight scene is just a thing of beauty Mm -hmm. i I love how well shot it is i love the 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 dedication of the two guys um the, the the fighting technique is really good um, it's fast paced. It's um, you've got like big, long, continuous takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very technical, uh, but it just looks so fluid and well done. Like I just, uh, I think it's fantastic fun to watch. The music oh, just accompanies it perfectly as well. Well, I think even when we saw it in the theater for the first time, everyone had the same thought because you get them uh, standing there, you know, and then the camera shifts to both their perspectives and then that piece of paper floats by i think practically everyone whistles you know uh, whatever the yeah, yeah. exactly because that's exactly i think what they were trying to go for and they set it up great yep. for that um yep I, the the bit i always like as well is that like the the 
like fly through the air at each other. They're firing their guns and then land on the ground. And um, Smith's like, "You're empty." And and Neo just goes, "So are you." And you don't see it very well represented mm-hmm. on screen, but like Smith tries to swing his gun at him and like hit exactly. him over the head with it, and he just yep. spins out the way and just like leaps up into the air. It, it was very um, cool. Yeah, and they they throw their guns away. Smith does that yeah, thing exactly. with his neck, yeah. and then they just go at it, and ah, oh, it's great because it's basically Neo getting beaten down. Mm-hmm. You know, like every time, it, like there's a pause in the action each time, and every time it happens, like Neo's up a little bit more like fucked up, like mm-hmm. because he's taking hits. And um, the and it was like. <sighs> There was a little bit of, well, there was a lot of suspension of disbelief that you have to have in this movie, but it's like the amount of punishment that he takes, because the laws of life and death still exist, like you can die in the Matrix, but, oh yeah, you know, the amount of damage he was theoretically taking, like he was getting thrown into walls, thrown through, you know, the kiosk there, it's like, eh. yeah. You know, all I did was fall off a bicycle and I broke four ribs, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just yeah, it's obviously heightened reality where people can sure. take more damage than that. But um, yeah, I, I I love when Smith just grabs him, takes him onto the railway tracks, mm-hmm. and drags him. Train by coming, foot. like it was, it was yeah. so so disrespectful and like just treating him like a like a sack of meat. And obviously, from from Smith's point of view, it doesn't matter if his physical body gets killed because he'll just come into another one. Exactly, um, and he's like. Uh, you hear that, Mr. Anderson? That is the that sound, is of, sound inevitability. of inevitability. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so menacing and intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And obviously, Neo escapes um, mm-hmm. and ends up. I, I think he makes it all the way to a, like an apartment where he's got the the phone that he needs, and that's right. where Smith's waiting for him. Which and is just, interesting because it's like. How did Smith know that he was going to that specific room? Like yeah. maybe I'm missing something here because up till now they were able to t- take over the the body of someone in the Matrix just by oh blah blah blah, and then they would you know be take over that person. But there wasn't anyone to take over in that room. I, I think they're aware of Neo's presence, so they kind of know where he is at any one time. And that's why okay. they're able to always like appear as like they're able to take over bodies in his path because they know where he's going okay um so yeah i I figured they've got some way of tracking him and so yeah they know he's heading for that room they they shoot him and um you know neo seems to die just like the oracle said that he would Mm. uh and that's when trinity is able to bring him back yeah. yeah, and I love how it's all intercut with like because the Sentinels, like in the real world, are coming for the 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 ship, right? Um, and if they if they were to like trigger the EMP, which is the only way they can destroy them, they yeah. would kill Neo in the Matrix. And so they're trying to hold off to the last possible second while this is going on. And this thing is carving its way through the hull of the ship, like exactly like breaking through and stuff. But that, um, that kind of bugged me about the timing of that scene because these sentinels, there was like five of them, and they're aggressively and speedily cutting through the hull. Uh, and when they're almost there and uh, Trinity has to give her little monologue and speak life into Neo, that's a long time that she's speaking and you don't hear anything. There's no uh, calamity or, or you know noise going on. It's like, what were the Sentinels doing? Were they just pausing to take a breath or something? Or... Yeah, like they were like, look, guys, it's a dramatic moment. We have to yeah, wait. We've got to wait. You know, give them their stop, moment. Stop, stop destroying the ship. Uh, but yeah, yeah, people are pointing out that it's the same room from the beginning of the movie where Trinity was, mm-hmm. uh, was which is really great, great. Like bringing it full circle. Fucking mm-hmm. yeah, I, I'd forgotten to mention that. Um, yeah, and what a great way to round it out. Mm-hmm. And then you know. Ne- Smith thinking he's killed Neo only mm-hmm. for him to come back as this mm-hmm. like messiah like figure um and just destroy Smith from the inside mm-hmm. like he's um he doesn't have to beat him physically mm-hmm. he just like takes over him um, well, the and whole, just ex- using the force you know or whatever it is that he did you know that was yes cool. yeah yeah when he just stops all the bullets midair I mean, um, and that's him realizing the true power of the one no one Which this is, side of Ray Skywalker could do that. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ray would make it look easy. 
Yeah. She wouldn't have to kill. She wouldn't have to die beforehand. She would just know how to do it. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, I love when when Smith tries to fight him and Neo just turns sideways and like he's <laughs> yeah, just going was, like this. Yeah, <laughs> just calm. No, <laughs> it, it makes it look easy. That was it was like both cool and humorous at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like just realizing that he is he's got this power. Uh, yeah, and destroys Smith and mm-hmm. uh, and just emerges into the 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 real world again just as they mm-hmm. they set up the MP. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just finishes with that that little phone call from Neo mm-hmm. to the, the the creators of the Matrix, saying like mm-hmm. that's uh, I don't know how this is going to end, but I know how it begins. I'm mm-hmm. going to show people a taste of freedom, mm-hmm. you know, a world without you. And then he just mm-hmm. flies up into the air. Um, just for me, like what a perfect way to end the film. Absolutely, um, Neo realizing his true power, and yeah, it, it was just a, a great, unique movie for its time. Mm-hmm. Like I know that whole concept's been parodied and you know done over a million times, but like that was the the first time that we got all of that stuff coming together into one film. For sure, I think it was what really impressed me the most is like at the end, you're left wanting more, but you're not really sure if you want it. It was just such a mm. satisfying thing where it didn't necessarily bore, it, like it definitely didn't bore you to death, but it left you with questions that you could discuss with your friends, much like what we're doing here. Uh, but it was a satisfying beginning, middle, end. It didn't need any further exposition. Uh, and so by making sequels and then whatever this fourth one is going to be like, I just think it just takes away from it. Yeah. I, I, I would have been fine, sorry, with uh, with that being the end of the story. Like mm-hmm. I, know, I get the need to make more because it made so much money and it was this big phenomenon, but sure. um, the sequels just never reached that same heights. They'd lost the uniqueness. They'd lost the novelty right. of it. Um, and I think that that movie by itself just stands alone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's almost like I don't need to know the ultimate fate of the war against the machines. I don't need to know what becomes of Neo mm-hmm. um, or, or any of that stuff. It's enough to know that like this is this is his story complete like he's become mm-hmm. the one he's fulfilled mm-hmm. this destiny and what happens beyond that is is up to you know your own imagination exactly. that would have been enough for sure uh, and it introduced us to concepts and philosophical and technological and but also just movie special effects that we haven't seen before yeah so it was very satisfying yeah like bullet time you know the 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 surround cameras, like we discussed, like all of this stuff, um, it either not been done before, or it, you know, been done in, in such a primitive way that we hadn't really seen it, um, like properly realized. So all of these things kind of came together into this one movie, and it was just, it was a fantastic film to watch. It was a great experience. Um, yeah, it's just the kind of film that I would. I would never have trouble recommending it to people. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I almost feel jealous of people that have never seen it before and they don't know what it's about or anything. Exactly. But I think it's, it's a great, enjoyable film yeah. to take on. I mean, that's how um, I feel about people who have never seen Aliens. And yeah, God damn man. it. Like, first there, of There's all, people out there, never seen Aliens, never seen Predator, never seen Terminator. Or Robocop, the original. The original, yeah. <sighs> you uh, know. I'm almost offended that if, if people don't see those movies, but uh, I wish, like you said, I wish I could see it again for the first time and like recapture that, uh, you know, the original awe that I had. Holy crap, that was awesome! Yeah, all of those, all of those films are special in their own way. But like, mm-hmm. I think, you know, even if you you didn't get them the first time around, which most people didn't, mm-hmm. you know, to experience them now, I think they would still have a pretty good impact. Oh, I obviously, think so. like special effects point of view it's not going to be the same but like just the impact of the story the characters all of that stuff the 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 sheer just novelty of it mm-hmm. that's something that um, is still unique to those films yeah i I've, I've lost count how many times i've seen aliens but uh, you know I, I never get tired of it no it's such well, a well done thing yeah i mean you never would because you know even if you know the story Mm-hmm. The the action and the, the the cinematography and all of that like that's still going to be enjoyable regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And and of course yeah, the, uh, the pulse rifle. The first time you see the pulse rifle, 
you know, uh, doing its thing. You're just like, what, what, what was that? That is so cool. Possibly the best, the best fictional weapon ever made. I would say it is. Uh, second would be Deckard's pistol from Blade Runner. Very, yeah. very cool kit bashing. And I love the idea of back then, that's what they had to do. They had to kit bash a little bit of this, a little bit of that, sprinkle a little, little bit of imagination. Bang. You know, you watch something like Deadpool 2, and I don't know what the hell what's his face was carrying. Um, a James. Oh, crap. What's his name? Thanos. The... What's the actor's name? Oh, Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin, thank you. Yeah. His character in Deadpool 2, I don't know what his weapon was. It had the lower receiver from a vector. It had the upper from God knows what. Um, and it was just ugly. It was, a, it was like, yeah. who? The prop designer was high when he was making that one. But anyway, now I digress. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny you mentioned Decker's pistol as well, because I was, uh, I was looking online because mm -hmm. I think it's a movie prop like that is one of the coolest looking weapons mm -hmm. um, because it's really functional looking. Mm -hmm. It's not like big and chunky like you, you sure. normally get with sci-fi pistols. It still looks pretty um, pretty sleek, well designed. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's got two triggers on it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, a double-barreled shotgun or something like that. It's, it's a it, strange looking weapon. It, but it has a lever on it, like a, from a lever action rifle. Uh, it's like so. What is that? Is like is that the chamber release? Is that a reloader? I who knows. Um, yeah, I have a, a prop maker, prop maker friend of mine who is he's as obsessed with Deckard's pistol as I am with the pulse rifle. So he knows it inside and out. And so he made one, uh, and I just I still can't figure out one hundred percent how it works. Yeah, but it looks good. That's the magic of movies. That's true. Um, what, what I was going to also go into, because um, I know we've we've got super chats here. Um, mm -hmm. Would you would you be up for doing some of them? Sure. See if we can get through them. Oh, right, cool. um, I can't believe we didn't even mention this. But can we raise a glass to the woman in the red dress? The woman in the red dress, yes. Just to you, woman, whoever the fuck you are. Yes. You know that he can uh, arrange a personal meet up with uh, <laughs> with the woman. The digital pimp hard at work yeah um i will say as well like um we, we were talking about switch earlier and how sad it was when she got killed off mm -hmm. um that that i think was going to be the wachowski's like stab at doing transgenderism within the context of the matrix movies because oh, okay. as i understand it um switch when you saw her in the real world was going to be a man and then when you when you see her within the matrix it's going to be the, the the actress that they used so it was the idea that your your physical self image is is different if you're transgender because you see yourself as female or whatever you're the opposite okay. gender is where you were born okay. which would have been a cool idea i just think it would have been difficult to convey um without like big lengthy explanations in the movie which would have probably eaten up too much time um mm. Hence the but name if Switch. you look at the actress that portrays Switch, she's mm -hmm. kind of like androgynous looking anyway. Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't mm -hmm. look, she's got short hair and stuff. Sure. She doesn't have like, um, you know, like big sort of um, female characteristics, should I mm -hmm. say. Um, Large so it, tracts of land. It, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting concept, but I think now they will go all in with that kind of thing. Oh, um, and probably hit it home too hard, if you know what I mean. Like they'll they'll really labor the point. Really, I haven't seen any movie that's or she'll show that's done that. Um, Batgirl certainly doesn't do that. Yeah, so. it's all about the message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you really have to look hard to to get that. Um, yeah, um, but that, I think that would have been a, a nice way of covering that that idea. Because mm -hmm. it, you know it's a it's a fair point. It's a fair thing to to address, mm -hmm. um, and I think something like that would have covered it quite neatly if you just give a little bit of explanation. You know, it could mm -hmm. have just been like, you know, why do you look different in the Matrix than you did in the real world? It's like, well, mm -hmm. you know, that not everyone sees themselves as they are, or something mm -hmm. like that. That's enough. That's enough and, to like the audience draw their own conclusions. And Ready Player One kind of did that as well. Like, you know, if you could. If you could create an ideal version of yourself, what would you be? 
in yes. this, this universe. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that obviously that's based more around what you customize your character be, to be rather than, you know, how you, how you actually see yourself. But yeah, it's the same concept, I suppose, yeah. Um, it's it's explored a bit more in the books, I think, mm -hmm. um, as I recall, because I've read the, the first book. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I did really enjoy it. I actually liked it more than the movie, to be fair. Fair enough. Uh, I, I was told to go see it, so I did. And um, when they're at their that disco or whatever, and she pulls out a pulse rifle, and it doesn't even... They got the sounds all wrong. I was like, yeah, um, it, it's it's weird, right? the The movie I think was well intentioned, but I think mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg was the wrong guy to be directing it because mm -hmm. it's so based around like internet culture in like mm -hmm. the the twenty well the, the sort of late twenty tens, I suppose it would have been at the time. But like, mm -hmm. it, it needs a director that's like really kind of aware of that and understands it and like a, mm -hmm. a guy who's in his 70s is just not going to get it right and i feel like spielberg was just he, he fell too much back on the the classic tropes like oh let's reference like the the shining because mm -hmm. that's a, a movie everyone knows about it's like yeah mm -hmm. but it's, it's nothing to do with what's actually going on right uh and he you know let's give him a cool car that has the, the features from back to the future and knight rider all kit bashed into one now that is did. that is from the that is from the um the book really but that that's something that doesn't become available until later like the okay. character starts out like he's got no money he's got no credits within the game world and so he's mm. stuck with the most shitty character he can get mm. um okay. and it's only later that he gets more more um, fame and resources that he's able to buy like the delorean but it's mm. got the knight rider like you know, light on the front of it, that sort of okay. thing. Um, um, I just felt that was crossing the streams in a slightly goofy way. But I think, well, there, there's loads of that. Like the, you know, he dresses up as Buckaroo Banzai and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's all kind of a pastiche of like just classic 1980s movies and tropes and stuff, which sure. is exactly like what the book is all about. Okay. The the guy who um, who is bequeathing his fortune to to the winner of this competition? Like he's obsessed with the 1980s, okay. um, and and so like it's all about 1980s culture and movies and music and all that sort of stuff, but, which I could respect. But yeah, totally. Got some things wrong. I would have I would have liked more aliens references and more Terminator references. Put it that way. Hey, amen to that. Yeah, uh, I'll see what I've got here though for for okay. super chats. So SCC. Sorry, SCB Wellbeing says, I'm just uh, glad Resurrections wasn't made after someone just said, nah, it'll be fine, and the other three movies aren't cheapened by the message. Um, mm. And also, you see Simu Leo from the Ten Rings doing the Hot Ones Challenge. He said that Asians are typecast in martial arts movies. Has he not met Keanu? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. It's such a dumb thing to say. Like if you if you look at Asian actors, like they, they've been in all kinds of roles throughout throughout movies. Like it's mm -hmm. not it's not just about kung fu movies. Mm -hmm. It's such a dumb like way of looking at it. Typecast. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Chuxenhausen says I'm excited for this, but I'm more stoked for the trailer for Cobra Kai season four. The men look ripped, including Terry Silver. Uh, Hawk's still a fucking legend, and Dimitri is a literal punching bag. <laughs> yeah, hmm. fuck okay. you, Dimitri. Hawk's gonna destroy guy. you. Um, and also from him says, on top of that, Drinker and Danquish. Most important is that uh, it still has that feel of nostalgia done right, which gives me hope. One more thing: Johnny makes the kids jump um, off a goddamn building. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I'm all I, in I, on that one. I haven't seen that. Um, I'll have to look that up. I'm I'm really pumped for Co Cobra Kai season four. Um, I, I've enjoyed every season. Um, yeah. Not quite so much season two, but like mm -hmm. you know, all the others have been great. And uh, yeah, Johnny's just an absolute legend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love. I just love the stuff that they get away with. Like, you know, he's very politically incorrect, and absolutely. Uh, yep. That's that's the way he should be, and I hope he never changes. For sure. That's what makes him so fun, and that's what makes the show so fun. It's weird. It taps into that thing that probably most people don't even acknowledge. It's like, oh, I actually really agree with Johnny on most of mm -hmm. this stuff. No. Right. 
send it to the internet. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Big Al says, love the drunken slur and eventual defeat of reading my super chat out on last week's celebration. Piss up. Yeah, I was a bottle of champagne in, man. What can I say? And it was only the second one that you got to, too. Uh, man, you were banjoed. But hey, drinkers got to do what drinkers got to. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I say? It was late at night, man. Um, but no, thanks for the super chat anyway, mate. Um, RRTNZ says drinker, loquacious lagavulin laced lord of literary le leisure domain, alliteration aside it's a day off so I'm listening live excellent, I'm glad you're able to tune in um, have a pint on me mate and I'll have a question for you and Dan later uh, alright, well we will look forward to that um, Stephen Lanuto hail drinker, awaiting my drinker plush so I can shout go away now more than I already do uh, still hoping to do a review with you on The Crow, Red October, or even The Deer Hunter. Um, I mean, I've already done a review of Red October, so you can get that on my second channel. Um, haven't done The Crow yet or The Deer Hunter, so it's always a chance. Uh, Craig Lee Lawrence Experience gave me $1. Thanks, man. Um, unhinged. Uh, I, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Indeed you do. Uh, crusty Jugglers. Agent Smith says humans are a virus that consumes everything and keeps spreading and taking over everything until there's nothing left. He's actually thinking of the message. Mm. Plot twist, Ooh. the red pill makes the left shut up. Indeed. Oh, oh yeah, I, if only. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of ironic that like the whole concept of a red pill was come mm. up, was, was created by by two people that are you know the most left-leaning of lefties mm -hmm. um so man i don't know man i think the new the matrix 4 might shatter a few illusions i guess Ugh. see that's why i don't want to see it yeah i don't i don't blame you um i i mean it's like the 22nd i think it comes out so it's really close to christmas Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll probably go and see it after Christmas because, fuck, man, I just don't give a crap at that point. I just, I would rather like spend a few days just enjoying myself and relaxing. That's, um, that's time better spent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Graham Gallagher says, "Drinker, you astoundingly sophisticated, sounding, honourable, observant, and laudable eccentric." Thanks to Danquish for his Blanton's recommendations. There you go. Okay, I will say that when I was uh, partaking of whiskey blanton's is the absolute pinnacle we have never tasted anything better like it's it's hard to come by it's expensive but wow it is definitely like it was definitely at the top uh, it's so, it's an expensive brew though isn't it it's like yeah. you're talking 70 80 dollars for a bottle i think about that yeah but it's uh john wick's bourbon of choice so obviously you have to have it so yeah uh, if Keanu Reeves reckons it's okay, then it's fucking okay. That's right. Uh, Michael Jordan says, Drinker, you fantastically festive fermented fluid fanatic. You're amazing. Uh, your content is a breath of fresh air uh, in a smog of shills and dunces looking into your books. Could you do the audible recording for them? 10 out of oh. 10. <laughs> oh, man, I would pay extra for that. I, I, did a, I did a chapter of one of my books. Um, and just about destroyed my vocal cords in the process because mm. man, that's a lot of like narrating. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's about as far as I can go. They won't let me do a whole book. I'm sorry. Um, Is it like because I'm still uh reading um your last one, uh, and it's like, is it wrong that I in my head Ryan Drink looks like the drinker? <laughs> no, it's very right. Okay, I just want to. Uh, no, I I didn't write him to look like me or anything like that. I tried to just, you know, as as trite as it might seem, like I tried to keep that separation between mm. me and what I write because sure. I, I I wouldn't want that crossover. If you know what I mean, it would mess okay. with my head a little bit. Okay. Um. But yeah, he he, he drinks like me, so that's that's definitely a similarity. Okay. Um. Digital Demonic Davros says, will you ever do the original Mad Max, not the Road Warrior, which Americans mix up all the time? Uh, yeah, the original is, is an interesting movie to look at. It's, it's mm -hmm. much more restrained um, and much more um, just a straight-up kind of thriller, mm -hmm. I, I guess you would call it. Um, yeah, it'd be an interesting movie to look at. Um, the, the, the whole like Mad Max series, I think, is a great example of just like 
you know, a, a series progressing over time and the, the, the changing sort of times and the changing um, attitudes towards movie making. Mm -hmm. um, particularly when you get to like Fury Road, where it's like mm -hmm. this incredible throwback to like a different era in movie making where there's, there's a lot of practical effects used um, and it just looks very grounded compared to what we get nowadays. For sure. Um, yeah, I would, I would be interested to look at all of the Mad Max movies. I've lost, I, I'm misremembering, which one had the toe cutter in it? Like the villain was named the toe cutter. Uh, that would have been the first one. The yeah, that was, yeah, that was the first one. Uh, Road okay. Warrior was the second one. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, toe cutter was the, the villain of the first one. Uh, the, okay. the villain of the second one was the great humongous. Oh, and right. then the, thir okay. the, the third one was like Tina Turner, which was weird as fuck. Weird. I just remember yeah. when he meets his end by like slamming into the truck head first and like just the editing that they did, they show his eyeball go like super wide and then wham. Yeah. Know, his motorcycle gets hit by the truck. And I was like, holy shit. Okay. That, yeah. That guy's not walking home. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the the next one I can't say his name, but he says hello. The critical, sorry, the crucial drunkard. Uh, congrats with one million subs. You absolutely deserve it. Me personally, never liked Matrix, but its contribution to cinema is undeniable. Have a good stream. Thank you, man. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about the Matrix. Like, I, I kind of see the Matrix as the movie that that really like put the final nail in the coffin of like those big '80s action heroes. You know those guys like Stallone and Schwarzenegger, who were who are massive, um, just ten years earlier, and kind of kept going into the mid nineties. Um, suddenly, you've got this new genre of action movies that's mm -hmm. fast paced and and it's all like kung fu oriented. It, it needs guys like um, Keanu Reeves who are lightly built and can move. They're nice and agile and young. Um, you know, and those older guys just weren't going to be able to do that. It just transformed what action movies were hmm. from that point on. I can agree with that. Um, and it, yeah, it was, you can't deny the influence that this movie had. It was, it was seismic, I think, within the action movie genre. And now um, everyone does bullet time and freeze frame 360 degrees. Well, I think, you know, that in itself, like that kind of, came and went in the 2000s and by that point even that was played out and so that then got abandoned and so you, you came back almost to a more natural style of action movies i think the Bourne films kind of kicked that off True. where it became yeah. much more grounded again um and and realistic to some degree right um and then you know yeah those those born movies were gritty and and believable in that sense yeah and I think the Mission Impossible movies kind of muscled into that territory a little bit. True, yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's it. Everything kind of has its time, I suppose. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. the Matrix idea and the Matrix kind of uh, style of action movies was very much a two thousands thing. Um, Dan Black says, I saw the Matrix in theaters when I was 15. I was so blown away from it that I spoiled the whole Matrix question to my dad when he picked me up. Luckily, he was so confused and didn't remember a thing. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good, at least. Um, Justin Gulbranson says, so glad I found you, Mr. Drinker. Uh, well, I'm glad I found you, Justin. Uh, you and your associates are like a breath of fresh air in the stink-filled halls of Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, we stink. We make our own stink um, in the process, but yeah, hopefully it's it's a little bit more palatable than what the, the shit that comes out of Hollywood. At yeah, least, luckily, at least we're uh, honest about the shit we make. Uh, thankfully, smell vision hasn't been invented yet. Otherwise, yeah, I don't want to transmit that here. To, here. Yeah, uh, Lost for Words says the original was a classic. Uh, the following sequels took a significant nosedive in quality, but these clearly ended the story there the new matrix film will be mediocre at best it makes me very sad uh yeah you're not the only one um i'm hoping against hope it'll be good but like i'm braced for it being absolutely awful um king has sorry kim husby says hail critical drinker love your content and your books what do you think of the western the quick and the dead gene hackman is a total boss in that movie uh yeah i mean jesus christ that movie had everyone in it you know, you had Gene Hackman, Russell Crowe, Sharon Stone, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, talk about an all-star cast. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and Sharon Stone was fucking hot in that movie. Man, she still had it back then. 19, what um, was it? 1990s Sharon Stone? Yes. Uh, so The Quick and the Dead, I think, was like 94 or 95. Okay. Hold on, let me let me just check. It's, uh, so that was 1995. Hmm. Yeah, so a few years before Leo did Titanic. Hmm. Um, and he's so much younger looking in that movie. Um, but yeah, like it was, it was a good fun movie. Um, quite like, I, I think there was a lot of that weird, um, reverse zoom thing that they did in Jaws where it, it kind of, the camera zooms in on a person, but everything else around them seems to pan out the way. Yeah, it's kind, yeah. kind of a weird one, but yeah, I remember, yeah, I quite like Quick and the Dead. Uh, it was Sam Raimi. Yes. It had a very Sam Raimi feel about it. That's mm. for sure. Um, yeah, good good movie for the most part. Uh, yeah, Daniel Munro says, um, Hail Drinker, sorry, Yes Drinker and Danquish just finished watching Glorious Bastards and now come here. Looking forward to this chat. Hope all is well. Ellie is Trinity, by the way. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I expect Trinity to be a, a strong, diverse um, woman of gay color or something. Whatever it is, I don't know. Um, Un, unspecified gender, probably. She she won't need no man anymore. I can guarantee that. Um, S- Sergeant Anus, <laughs> great name, says okay. Agent Smith looks more like Agent Dick. Anyways, shoot out to sorry, shout out to my buddy who self published some books in quarantine. He wants to send the drinker a copy. Does he have a PO box? Stay happy, healthy, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, happy Thursday to you, Anus. Um, yeah, I don't have a PO box set up, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, maybe best to email me and see if we can sort something out there. Mm-hmm. Um, also from Daniel Monroe, he says, question, gentlemen, is this movie more forgiving when it compares to late nineties fashion compared to maybe something like blade, which suffers harder? Mm. I think they're, they're much of a, much of a muchness, aren't they? In terms of like the fashion and stuff, it's all very leather, sunglasses, techno music. Yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't see many see anything that seemed terribly anachronistic. Uh, like you know, you watch uh, older '80s movies or something like that, and you can tell the fashion. Uh, and it's just like it, it it seems so jarring to to see that in the Matrix. It almost seems timeless because black is a you know, it's a pretty uh, universal color. Uh, yeah. I just think it's cool. Um, I mean, I still want Morpheus's track uh, trench coat. Yeah. And uh, who doesn't love uh, going to a bondage bar? <laughs> well, you know, Saturday night and all that. You got to do oh, what you got to do. Wait, I said the quiet part loud. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. I, I, I think in terms of Blade and The Matrix, like they're very similar styles because they're influenced by the, the same era in movie mm-hmm. making. And at that point, yeah, like leather trench coats and, and sunglasses were cool as fuck, and that's what they did. Um, well, actually, actually, I do have a leather trench coat that I had custom made for one of my cosplays. Mm-hmm. There you go. I'm thinking, well, you had to go and get your glasses, so I'm going to go get trench coat. Yeah, yeah. Good. Put yourself on, on, switch your camera off, and then do your thing. And then that way. There we go. Yeah. So he's going to do his thing, and then when he comes back, he's going to be in full-on Neo, Neo mode. Uh, next one, Arkwinder says, Good evening, drinker. Hope your day is good. By the way, great video game series I highly, highly recommend is Gravity Rush and its sequel. Both are amazing and are legit some of the best games ever made. Um, I've never played Gravity Rush, actually, so I need to give that a try in that case. Um, Michael Gonzalez says, They killed Morpheus in the Memorpiga. Um, and we were told it was canon by the Wachowskis at the time. Boy, that was a waste of uh, $50, lol. Uh, yeah, wouldn't be surprised if they retcon a shit, con- a shit ton of stuff for this movie. Um, Patient Elijah says, Hey, Drinker, in open bar number five, you stated that Attack on Titan is on your watch list. If you do start and finish it, will you make a video on it after? Uh, yeah, I absolutely will. 
Hey, <laughs> there you go. It's like a wet, a leather waistcoat thing. Yeah, you're on mute, man. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, there you are. There you are. Just because like Sub Zero was one of my most popular cosplays that I ever did, I decided to do um, a mashup of Sub Zero and Reaper from Overwatch. Uh, so. Uh, a clothier friend of mine custom made this jacket for me. So it uh, goes all the way to the floor and uh, it's weighted at the bottom. So when I walk, it swishes and flows just like Morpheus's jacket did. So it does look very nice. Very nice. I the fact away. that it's custom made, fucking great. Exactly. Um, yes, uh, Gabba, whatever, is saying that Ghost of Tsushima is the perfect game for me. Yeah, I've played Ghost of Tsushima and completed it. Uh, it's great. Great story, great acting. Um, absolutely brilliant game. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, for me, it one of the best games of, of last year. Um, That's PlayStation only, though, correct? Uh, I don't know if it's exclusive or not. I, I, I played it on the PS5, but I okay. don't know what uh, else it is available on. Um, but yeah, I, pre I'm, I stream some of it and you can find it on my second channel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the question as well is, um, is so Attack on Titan, uh, is it on my watch list? Yes. Um, and if I finish it, will I do a video? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm watching Cowboy Bebop at the moment. That's that's my gateway drug into anime. And so Attack on really? Titan, I think, will be next. You're, you're actually watching Cowboy Bebop? No, no, the anime version, not the, okay. Okay. Not the Netflix one. All right. Um, yeah, and I'm enjoying it so far. It's, it's just, it's good fun. Hmm. Uh, it's got that real feel of like, um, I guess, 1990s anime, mm -hmm. you know, and um, yeah, I, I really like it. So looking forward to talking about that. Um, Craig Road Jr. says, just watched the Cowboy Bebop video and I knew the show was cancelled as soon as the non-binary guy opened the door and showed us the club. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that, but uh, I... And, got a feeling i know what you're talking about also the merovingian was an underrated character and he deserved more movie time to explain how he evolved and became so powerful um i like the air of mystery about the merovingian um i don't need to know necessarily his whole history or anything like that um but yeah he he delivers a good speech um and he just i love how he just forces a woman to orgasm just because he can um yeah that's, that's the kind of guy the merovingian is um, well, to be fair, she was eating something chocolate, which explains a lot. Well, yeah, because it, it just it, this, it's the same part of your brain that it stimulates, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, Dan Haynes, would you ever do a series of reviews of the Metal Gear Solid franchise like you did for the Resident Evil ones? Mm -hmm. um, I could. Like Resident Evil, I've got, it's got like more of a special place in my heart, okay. more so than the Metal Gear Solid games. Not to say I don't like them or anything, because I played pretty much all of them. Um, and in terms of storytelling, like they they are something special, um, particularly like the later entries. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five was garbage, but like um, two and three were great. You didn't um, like Phantom Pain? Nah. Hmm. Um, there there was no the story didn't have a conclusion. It just kind of stopped. Mm, which okay. which really pissed me off. Uh, it just felt like, it, well, it felt like exactly what it was. Like Kojima was forced to like rush the ending of it because his his company were just like forcing him to to stop it. Like Konami were just saying, you know, we need this out, and so you got a half finished game. So it really pissed me off. Um, you, yeah, you could, you could admit it. You were offended by the female protagonist in it, right? Well, I mean, Quiet is, uh, oh, man, she's she's great. It's like she can't talk and she has to not wear clothes. Like, what's not to like? <laughs> hey, let me tell you, that was, that, was, that was a golden season in the cosplay world where everyone and their sister was cosplaying as Quiet, so you got to see that a lot. I bet, yeah. Like, who, who doesn't want to see that? So. Um, you're getting called out here, though, by Alf, Aleph Project saying, oh, my God, he just said the Wachowski brothers. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, they, they were the, the Wachowski brothers at the time. Now they're right. the Wachowski entities. I don't know what you call them, but the yeah, brothers something. Wachowski. Yeah, the the Wachowski things. Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what they go by now. Um, 
PSX Hacker says the matrix was, was always profoundly diverse long before wokeness was a thing. So I honestly think the new matrix can fare well, even in the current climate. Loved your video uh, written by children. Keep up the great work, drinker. Thank you very much, man. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed making those those why movies suck today. Um, it's a good chance to get my thoughts out there, I suppose, without having to do a specific movie. It's more just like a general. Well, but it's so true. Like, I mean, your comparison of Wrath of, Wrath of Khan versus the new Star Treks or the, the show, it's like, who can't, who wouldn't be able to see that difference? Like, one was written by uh, uh, stupid people, children, and the other one was, you know, written by people who actually know their stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking to see what became of Star Trek when you see how good it was when it was at its height. For sure. It's, it's such a shame. Um, Blue Satoshi says, I read somewhere a long time ago that the brain doesn't have its own pain receptors. Yeah, apparently that's true. Uh, that data spike thing probably wouldn't hurt per se, but it probably would feel weird. Uh, yeah, because I think you can actually perform brain surgery on people and they're kept conscious while it's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't like disconnect the wrong part of their brain or whatever. But yeah, like I don't think the brain actually does have nerve endings as such in it. Uh, but that being said, I wouldn't want a giant fucking spike shoved into my brain. So yeah, I'm killing enough of it with alcohol as it is. I think this is as far as I would go, like a USB stick that you could just maybe plug in the back. Yeah, that would, even that. Damn, man. Um, <laughs> uh, Daniel Monroe says, ever noticed that the whole theme in the Matrix is green, like code? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, the color scheme like of all the buildings and all the surroundings within the Matrix is green. Um, and it's quite subtle. Like If someone doesn't tell you about it, you wouldn't maybe pick up on it initially. Mm. But there it is. Um, not Brian Young says, cheers for Saturday, drinker. Fun stream. That was my pleasure, man. Um, I, I do try and get on, on other like channels that are just starting out or whatever, so it was nice to be able to come on. Uh, Human Kirk says, I don't care about this Matrix reboot. Everyone who's seen uh, both Dark City, sorry, everyone who's seen both knows that Dark City was the better movie and now happy it bombed so there won't be reboots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, Wormy Spoons, if I don't mention the vase, would you have still broken it? Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefano Vergari says, I think Matrix 3 rocks. He is pissing metal. <laughs> yeah, the mech suits were quite cool. I'll give them that. But like overall, the movie was kind of dumb. Um, Ryan Vert, he knew he wouldn't beat the agent, so he did worse. Um, yeah, that that's possibly true. Like Morpheus knew he was going to get his ass kicked, so it was almost like a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. Um Lehman Russ says the Mousy's guns were Tommy guns. Very pimped. Were they? Really? Because I thought the magazines were mounted below the the um, the handle rather than in front of it. No, the well, I mean, it's quite a quick scene. The actual receiver, the upper receiver of the Thompson, is quite high up. Uh, so when you like when you remove a magazine, whether it's the stick or the drum, um, the attachment point is really high up. So that makes sense because the way they did those. Uh, drum magazines, they were, you could see that the feeding mechanism was really high up. So that makes sense. They were, they were probably taught me guns. You're right. Hmm. Okay. Um, PSX Hacker says, I honestly don't get the hate against Trinity. She was one of the most powerful red pills in her own right. It's not like she's been shoehorned in to replace Neo or anything. She's one of the top five most powerful red pills. Uh, yeah, I mean, Trinity is an awesome character. I guess I just never saw her as the one. I, mm. I always saw her as a supporting kind of character. Um, and she was fantastic uh, in her own in her own role. You know, she was a great fighter, great character. Um, just you know, you, you felt genuinely bad when she got killed off. Um, but yeah, I just I never ever saw her as the one. It just it would feel weird to try and move her into that role at this point. Um, Black Sun says, uh, "Gonna write you in my death note, drinker. Your time's ticking." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh -oh. um, Paul Colton says, I am db.com. Uh, those weapons were custom built camera operated electric driven automatic 12 gauge shotguns crafted by John Bowring, lead armorer of the film. So they were shotguns. I find that hard to believe because they, they look pretty small for shotguns. 
I mean, they could be, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. Hmm. Um, I'll, I'll do a few more as you go. Uh, Two Tim says, I watched all the Matrix movies and still don't understand the ending. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, how much time have you got, really? Um, there is there is a kind of logic to it, but it would take a, quite a while. Uh, Mud Crab says, can't get those frozen turds Dankwish suggested, so I guess we'll have to go away now and do the work thing for a few hours. Yeah, I'm sorry, man, but uh, I hope we made this a bit more bearable for you, at least. Uh, Lehman Russ, the two guns Mouse uses are Manville automatic shotguns, really obscure guns. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Manville automatic shotguns. Manville? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to look this up. All right. Uh, oh, shit. Glocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. That is apparently what they are, because they're referenced there. Oh, fuck, they look weird. Yeah, okay, so... The... Yeah, the magazines are circular, so they feed horizontally into the into the shotgun breech as they go round. Okay. Um, so it's almost like a Gatling gun, but it's like the, the magazine is what spins in, instead of the barrels. Yeah, so it's kind of like a revolver, but like it's got many more um, many more chambers. Yeah, that is a strange gun. I'm just going to see if I can... I don't know if I can bring this up, actually. Oh, cam actor, okay. Huh. All right. All uh, right, hold on. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I can bring that up actually, which is annoying. Huh. Actually, yeah, hold on. Yeah, bear with me while I do this. Um, hmm. I see what's going on there. Okay. Yeah, it, it kind of makes sense when you see it up close. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. I won't keep people waiting any longer because otherwise I'm just going to spend the whole stream just going, aha, okay. And... All right, I'm going to see if I can bring this up. It's possible if people can maybe see them. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Can people see that? If it pops up, yeah. Uh, Okay, you're just seeing like my file. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Share screen and okay, and let's see if it comes up this way. Yeah, can you see that now? That's apparently the gun that he had. I don't know if it's appearing for you. Uh, I don't see anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, I'll take that out. Never mind, anyway, because it'll, right. it'll keep it'll waste too much time trying to like make this work. Um, but yeah, it it's, uh, it does make sense. It's an automatic shotgun, apparently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sorry for guys in chat. I, <laughs> it did say that it was sharing screen there, and you should be able to see it, but I guess not. Anyway, I'll go on to the next one. Um, <sighs> Right. Uh, McLeod says, Dostoevsky said about the need for human suffering in Notes from the Undergrounds. Uh, oh, okay. So, like, that's a kind of Dostoevsky kind of uh, philosophical point of view from Agent Smith. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, Leo Film says, you forgot to, again to finally watch Beowulf with Christopher Lambert, didn't you? It was released the same year as The Matrix and Justice Techno. I, I hope if uh, I hope it fucking is. Um, yeah, it's on my list of things to watch, but like I've got like a few other things that I need to polish off before then. 
Uh, PSX Hacker says, Neo was more powerful than Trinity and Morpheus due to the systematic anomaly code. Also, Neo is not the one anymore since his prime program code was returned to the source to restart the Matrix at the end of Revolutions. That is true, so it could be anyone now. Mm. Uh, Jack McCarthy says, Merry Christmas to you, sir. Merry Christmas to you, Jack. Uh, thank you for all the great work you do. Uh, for years now, I've gotten more entertainment for you than from Hollywood. Uh, uh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, I do my best. Uh, TG says, Morpheus says to Neo that no one can be told what the Matrix is, but I think it can be explained quite easily. I mean, you could explain it. I just don't think anyone would accept it until they saw it. Like it's so out there that like you would really have to witness it with your own eyes to understand it. Mm -hmm. um, Sentinel Rex says, take the blue sauce kebab um, and you will wake up in the morning thinking this was all a dream. Eat the red sauce kebab and you'll see how far the toilet bowl really goes. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, man. I well like done. that one. Well done. Uh, too Much says, it's highly probable that The Matrix is based on an Italian comic Razzi Amari by Stefano Dissane from 1992, though the Wachowski's lawyers may disagree. Yeah, well, I can't say anything about that because I'll get sued. Uh, mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe they maybe they did plagiarize. Kenny Stevens says, my uncle worked on Matrix 2 and used to live next door to Keanu um, in Cali to the mid-2000s. And he said Keanu would host parties and would often walk out and piss off the balcony in full view of the public. <laughs> 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 I hope he fucking did. Uh, that's awesome. Hats off um, to you, Mr. Reeves. Um, bottom Barrel Budget Films says, hey, love your videos. Have some support from the left. We're not all babies about uh, great humor from great creators. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much, my friend, and I appreciate that. Um, Andre Antonio Gonzalez says, Matrix 4 is going to be garbage. Uh, Lana told she did, sorry, she redid all the iconic scenes from the previous three movies just to prove you cannot redo 100% the Matrix movie, aka lighting in a, lightning in a bottle is once in a, once in a lifetime. Uh, I very much agree, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, SMW175 says, Evening, gents. What a movie. Drinker, my sci-fi novel Heritage is being published in 2022. Shameless plug. Uh, I wanted to say thanks for the Ryan Drake novels. Something very different to read during edits. Well, thanks, man. And uh, yeah, for people looking for a sci-fi novel, check out Heritage. Um, Mark J. Drinker, we love your, your reviews. Enjoy a beer on me. Thank you, mate. Um, also, we consider reviewing The Foundation and some other popular shows we're suffering through lately. I mean, man, there's so many popular shows that I'm trying to review right now. It's a struggle. Um, I'd, I've heard bad things about The Foundation, though. Uh, Leon K. In 2021, The Matrix is a documentary. <laughs> yeah, just like Demolition Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Snell World. Drinker, you need to be introduced to the MK-19 automatic grenade launcher. Oh, that's that's a thing of beauty. Is that not basically like a revolver, except it's got grenades in it instead of bullets? I'm looking that up right now. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the one that the, the, T, the Terminator uses in T2. Like, it's loaded with gas grenades, but, like, you can put explosive oh, ones in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. beautiful. I could make use of that. Yeah. Uh, you could have a fucking great night out in Scotland with that. Uh, I, I'm, still, King... I'm still partial to the, the minigun, though. That's just so satisfying. Mm. That is true. Uh, night King 01. The agents can dodge any bullets from any distance, except when Trinity announces him herself, and he looks at her and that minigun firing at them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. When she goes like, dodge this, she mm -hmm. shoots him right in the head. Yeah. The Bits and Pieces man says, what do you think of the practical effects of Titanic? Um, really good for the most part. I know they mm -hmm. did use, obviously, CGI at times, but uh, building a full-size replica of the ship to sink it is pretty fucking cool. Um, Flicks by Cody, what happens when the abducted bodies, when the agents leave them? Do they wake up in random places naked? I, I don't actually know. I, that's a good question. When an agent moves outside the body that they've taken over, what happens to them? Do they just like come back to life or what? I assume that no they idea. were dead because they took bullets. Uh, yeah, but say they didn't get killed. Like say an agent just takes over a body for a limited time and then jumps to someone else. Okay. Would you just like go back to normal or what? I don't know. It is a bit of a weird one. Um, 
Malcolm McKee says, have you watched the South Park post-COVID specials and would you ever consider reviewing them now that both parts are out? Um, I haven't watched any South Park for quite a while, actually, so I, I haven't seen those, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's just kind of lost touch with South Park, sadly. Uh, let me just catch up with this. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Ryan Gingrass says, on the tracks of Land Note, when are we going to get a Holy Grail happy hour? <laughs> It'll come, trust me. Oh, uh, Joey, uh, why can't they make a good Keanu sequel like Point Break, or is Point Break considered a Swayze flick? I thought they were pretty equal in Point mm -hmm. Break, if I'm remembering. Yeah, sure. I, I don't see it as one or the other. It's just both. Uh, why are we always yelling? Give me a super sticker. Thanks, man. Um, Zagros Ozkan says, Mr. Critical, sir, please let shine some light on the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Like, I've, I've watched bits and pieces of it, but I just felt weird. I didn't like the idea of a TV show around the Terminator. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. Um, I know, like, Mauler thinks quite highly of it, but I don't know, man. Um, RRTNZ says, Hail Drinker and Dan, question, they originally wanted Connery for Morpheus and Will Smith for Neo. Your thoughts? P.S. Watch the guard. It's, it's really good. Um, yeah, I think they wanted Sean Connery for the architect rather than Morpheus. That's my understanding. Um, and yeah, they did want Will Smith as Neo. But I, I don't know why he turned that down, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's it's one of those situations where it's tough to picture anyone apart from Keanu Reeves playing Neo mm -hmm. at this point. Um, I don't think Will Smith would have been good in that role. I don't think he would have had the act the acting chops for it. Well, he would have um, just tried to be tried to be funny. Um, yeah, and that that's not that kind of movie. Yeah. Um, Tyron Beard says, "Drinker mate, Rennie and Big Daddy MRI are the best." Ah, well, they are indeed. They're very good mods, and I, I appreciate the work that they've done today. Um, Fog Fogrim, Primarch of the Emperor, says, Hey, Drinker, would you rather watch Ghostbusters 2016 five times in a row or the final season of Game of Thrones? Which would you pick? Whoa. I mean, if I only had to watch the final season of Game of Thrones once, I'd probably go with that. But if I had to do that five times in a row, yeah, I'd go with Ghostbusters because it's over quicker. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, the personal recommendation, uh, your commentaries on the last season is what kept us going. <laughs> we, o we only finished the, the last season of Game of Thrones just to see your video on it, to hear your take on it. And that's what kept us going. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... God, yeah. It was it was painful. But yeah, I think I'd, I'd definitely watch that over Ghostbusters 2016. At least there is moments in it. Um, here's the thing Will Smith turned down the Matrix for Wild Wild West good choice <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice one Will whoopsie to be fair like Sean Connery turned down the Matrix and Lord of the Rings so that he could do League of Extraordinary Gentlemen did he really great choice Sean wow okay yeah um, yeah he's famous for turning down really lucrative roles that would have made him an absolute fortune um, John Freeman gave me two dollars thanks mate um, Paul, Col Paul Colton, Vernon Wells, the guys who splattered on the truck in Road Warrior played the baddie who fought Arnold in the end of Commando. Yes, Bennett. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Vernon Wells, Australian actor. Mm -hmm. Good guy. Um, and yeah, he was great in Commando. Like, I love when he gets electrocuted and it just makes him stronger. Exactly. Matrix, I'm not going to shoot you between the eyes. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you between the between balls. The balls. <laughs> yeah. great Let off some steam, Bennett. Um, Panhead says have recent movies been copying John Wick um, yeah. I think there's been an influence there like sure. the, that attempt to get those long continuous shots but man there's not many actors that can do it mm -hmm. um, Steve O'Devil says hail drinker and Danquish hope you all have a good weekend I'll be going to see Spider-Man because of nostalgia yeah I think that's why most people are seeing it to be fair um, Mitch uh, Bolischik says finished uh, Ryan Drake number nine today. Damn, that's the final one. Solid series. I do audios because I do long work commutes uh, and traffic causes me to lose focus. So I can't tell if there's a big loose end or if I missed it being addressed. Trying not to spoil 
uh, book 10, well, maybe one day um, I, I definitely could go back to the Ryan Drake series, but like at least I can feel like it's nicely wrapped up as it is. Um, Zwiback says, Drinker, notice you still haven't watched uh, Gennady Tarkovsky's animated Star Wars Clone Wars micro series from 2003. Wait, is this a Star Wars chat? It is not, and uh, I'm not as knowledgeable about all these little Star Wars series as I should be, so I have not seen that, I'm afraid. Um, Schmandalf says, Merry Christmas, Drinker. What? You didn't like Metal Gear Balrog at the end of Metal Gear Solid V? <laughs> yeah, there's so much random shit in that that game. It was ridiculous. Um, I like Metal Gear Solid Four though. Um, I love how the final cutscene goes on for about two hours to try and tie up all the, the, the loose ends. Um uh, deleted scenes. Hail Drinker and Danquish. I just got out of Spider Man and it's well worth seeing. Excellent. I'm looking okay. forward to it. Um, some guys, Fat Cat says, uh, Hey Drinker, I'm a bit late to the stream, but I got a question for you. Have you seen the new Matrix demo with the new game engine? If so, what's your thoughts? Um, no, I haven't seen it. Um, I never really got into the Matrix games, so I've, I've never really kept up with them. Um, doesn't surprise me that they're tying one into the new movie, though. Um, I don't know. I imagine now with the technology we've got, like a, a Matrix game would look cool as fuck. It's um, using the uh, Unreal Engine, which is very aptly named. So yeah, that engine's been that. around for like twenty years now. Jesus, I used, to, I used to work with it. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's fantastic stuff. Flexible, I suppose. I take it they just kept upgrading it over oh, time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Um, What's the next one? Mitch Balaschuk says, real world uses uh, no filter. Matrix uses green filter. Dojo scene uses a yellow filter, so it felt surreal, but different from the Matrix. Yeah, that's mm. fair dues. Um, Range of the Sis says, good stream, guys. Well, thank you. Uh, hopefully, we've provided you guys with a little bit of entertainment tonight. Cheers. Uh, I think we're almost at the end, actually. Uh, Andre Antonio Gonzalez says, watching worldwide snippets from Matrix 4, apparently Trinity does not want to unplug, so Neo becomes AI and both become Architect and Oracle. Thoughts? I don't know. I would need to watch it first before I know. Uh, Leo Film says, in the German dub, Trinity doesn't say dodge this. The dialogue is only human, only an agent. One of the few times a dub improved a movie for me. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Um I thought yeah, Dodge that's actually better cool. than Dodge This. That's that's fucking cheap. Um, yeah, only an agent. Echo Chamberlain, if a studio wanted to adapt Ryan Drake as Rihanna Drake with the protagonist bisexual and hair shaved on one side and offered a million for the rights, would you say, nah, it'll be fine? Uh, no, it won't be fine. Um, I, I probably wouldn't give it up at this point. Mm -hmm. Not to see that done to it because it would be my name attached to it, unfortunately. So, nah, oh. fuck that. I'll only watch it if it's got um, Ruby Rose. Yeah, getting murdered. <laughs> uh, Night King 01 says, I don't know about this movie. I really don't think it's all that. The movie seems very surface level. The more I think about it, the more plot holes, plus the Hong Kong action I was already accustomed to. I mean, yeah, I'd imagine you've seen better Kung Fu in other movies, but like, I think it's, it's a pretty decent plot in terms of like uh, predestination and all that. I, I liked it. Um, Adrian says if you can have sleep with any YouTuber who would it be um, probably myself as I do every night you know um, nah, I don't fucking know man um, no comment on that one uh, yeah I'll just get sued if I do this mm -hmm. um, Mark M says is the entertainment industry screwed now with modern political agendas or is there still hope there's always hope um, and, and shows like Arcane showed that you can still produce good stuff uh so i think there's hope and just have to keep bigging up the ones that do well um Fomzy says hail drinker not sure if you're a fan of westerns but if so give old henry a chance uh well worth the time cheers well i'm always up for a western because it's a genre that's sadly missing now um yeah i think can i think it might. do a can i do a secondary shout out Absolutely, you can. All right. Uh, well, as I said when I emailed you, um, I somehow missed it, but you did a review of The Outpost. And yes. I, wa I watched that a couple of months ago, and that ended up being my absolute favorite, like, real-life uh, 
uh, modern warfare movie. It yep. Just, it is so well done, and it just like it's it's visceral. Um, I can't recommend that one enough. So the drinker recommends it, and I say, if you haven't seen it, the outpost. It, it's really good. It's it's a, got that feel of Black Hawk Down. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not done on quite the budget, but like just a really solid uh, war movie. Mm -hmm. You know, um, finely acted. Yeah, good cast. I like Scott Eastwood. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the Foundation series did to Asimov what Star Trek Discovery did to Star Trek. They even have two Michael Burnhams. It's shameful, really. Oh Christ, that's. I don't think the universe is ready for two Michael Burnhams. Um, Carpal tumble. <coughs> Drinker, your body starts breaking down muscle mass for energy after two or three days of rest. It's part of why physical therapy is both painful and long. Oh, Christ, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, imagine yeah. spending a whole lifetime just doing nothing. Um, the Outcast Creative. Drinker, my first two books, Diamonds in the Sky, have a mad Scotsman bus driver and Elvis impersonator you'd love. Part of the story set west of Aberdeen where one of 200 alien ships lands on the Earth. Four more books to go. Damn. Sounds like a trip, man. <laughs> nice one. Uh, Night King 01 I think the experience when it came out was the reason is what it was uh, wasn't around maybe that's why I didn't see anything great also the romance sucks I, I think the romance is alright in it um, it's it's a bit awkward and, and kind of unemotional but like it's it's a very different kind of world that these, these characters live in I suppose so that's perhaps understandable uh, yeah, Platoon is a great army movie. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll, what we'll probably do is end it there because we've we've been going for about three hours now. I want to thank the the chat. I want to thank all the people that have super chatted me and and been so generous with their their donations. Um, all the guys in chat that have given us such awesome comments and stuff. It's been great. Um, thank you to the mods that have done such a great job, like keeping everything ticking over. Um, and thank you to my friend Danquish for coming on tonight, mate. It's It's been great to have you on again. Thank you very much for having me, sir. No, it's been awesome. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll finish up there. That That is all we've got for today. So go away now.